Welcome back to Haterade Hour, Haterade Live, the Haterade Hour podcast. I'm your host, Jordan, aka Haterade Cowboy, and welcome to this episode. And we've got some some friends with us, and we're going to be talking about some different topics. We're going to be talking about some home theater updates, if there are any. We're going to be talking about large TVs and home theater, Kaleidoscape, Dune, and M Wave. But before we get started, as always, let's be let's have fun. Let's be kind to one another. And let's keep it G-rated. All right. Well, we got the original lineup of every, the Everything is Bigger Texas Home Theater Tours minus one, but plus one this time. So if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen any of the home, te home theater tours that I've done, these are some of the gentlemen that are on those tours. So I'm going to let everybody go around the room and introduce themselves. We've got Vern. Hi. Yeah. I'm Vern, and I'm the person with the curved screen in the relatively small theater. Um, enjoyed all of the uh, conversations we've had so far. Not a whole lot new to report on this end. No updates to the theater or anything like that. I'm digging that shirt you're rocking tonight, Vern. <laughs> Is that from your, uh, your Hawaii roots? Yes, you're right. It's uh, probably a... 40-year-old Aloha shirt from back from my days in Hawaii. Nice. Yeah, but they don't make them like they used to, do they? <laughs> no, they don't. That's that's a, that's a testament to how things were made back then because it's, it's still wearing it. It still looks good. <laughs> mm -hmm. And we got Rusty Minch. What's up, Rusty? Hey, hey thanks for having me. Good to be back again. Um, looking forward to cutting up with you guys. We always have a good time. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, and the only thing I guess really new with me is, you know, I uh, volunteered to work on the M wave to help coordinate the event. And that's been a lot of fun. It's also been a lot of work, but uh, it's the fun kind of work. So glad to be doing that. So I, I figure we'll probably talk about that a little bit more later. Yeah. Yeah. We'll talk about that too. We've got John. What's going on, John? Hola. How's it going? How you been? Pretty good, man. How about you? Great. Doing well. Um, so John Brock here in the DFW, Texas area, and, um, I'm, <clears throat> this is the best acoustic room on, uh, in my house, obviously. So I, I'd like to sit in the theater whenever I'm doing any podcasts and, uh, hopefully the, I, I'm not hooked up to any other gear or microphone, so hopefully it sounds okay. But, um, yeah, not a lot new in the theater, sad to say. I'm always thinking about it. Um, I think my first thing I want to get, though, will be I, I do want to upgrade my um, Kaleidoscape uh, storage drive because it's a measly little six terabyte. So, <laughs> Same here. <laughs> um, so I, I, I still want that. That's that's my first next thing to get. But there's always things in the in the bullpen waiting to waiting to pull the trigger on. Oh, yeah, always. So we'll talk about that some more, too. And then we've got the man who started it all, Doyle Schaefer. What's going on, Doyle? You're muted, by the okay, way. Okay, there we go. Had it unmuted. <laughs> it's all on this tiny phone. Hello, yeah, I'm Doyle. Uh, I, uh, I'm still enjoying my TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're, we're going to talk about that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but it's good to see everybody. We have another Rusty that couldn't make it tonight. He had to watch his kids, so... Rusty, if you're watching this or if you watch this later, you know, I know you're you're here with us in spirit. He just checked in in the chat, R2-D2. Oh, yeah, I see him right there. What's going on, Rusty? So cool, man. Yeah, it's it's been, uh, I think the last time we got together was January, and Doyle wasn't able to make it with us last time, but he's he's here with us. So cool, guys. Great. Thank you guys for, for coming on and hanging out with us tonight. Probably won't try to keep it too long because i know everybody's got stuff to do maybe about an yeah, hour, thanks for having hour us. So. oh yeah thanks for thanks for coming Thank back you. you guys have been integral to to the channel let me let me film your home theater tours got some you know got an opportunity to check out some really cool stuff so appreciate you guys so we got some people in the chat what's going on everything with mdp we got evangelist great panel thank you guys or thank you, Michael Slocum Jr. Good evening, Doyle and Rusty. 
And we've got, let's see, looks like Evangelist is from H-Town. We got Rusty. We got Rob Zelinka. What's up, Rob? Great to see Duel. I need to hear those Police and JTRs and Harbottle subs. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. So, yeah, I know some of you kind of touched on it a little bit, but we were going to talk about some uh, home theater updates or possible upgrades that you guys might like to see. So I haven't changed a whole lot in mine. I've got some stuff in for review. I actually have a couple stuff that I need to review still. I need to review the two Stark Sound subs, a single. I need to do a video for that one, and then I need to do a stack sub for that one. I still need to review the R&L 1723 2V subwoofer and then i got some other stuff in for uh acoustics i'm doing some videos for acoustics i just got an Akio receiver in for that and then i've got something that i'll be posting on home theater reviews channel that i can't talk about yet until after april 17th so got some cool stuff coming in as far as upgrades i don't think i've made any really other than the the new rack that I got and you know put that together so that was that was a horrible deal I ripped up the carpet in the back of the room put in some laminate uh, vinyl flooring did some more painting still need to do some other stuff and I'm hoping this year I can blow out or replace the front move the front wall back because there's a closet behind my screen hopefully I can blow that out and fix that up and make it look a lot better but let's see Vern, any any uh, I know you said you didn't have you haven't changed anything. Are there any future upgrades that you're looking at doing or that you would like to do? Any plans? Uh, not currently. Um, you know everything is working well, and that's about all you can ask for in the home theater. Yes, sir. That's as long as everything's working well, that's a feat in itself. Because I don't know about you guys, but I've always got something where it's like, man, this this thing decided not to turn on. I've got to reboot it. <laughs> Yeah, that constantly, uh, that sort of constant <clears throat> stuff goes in. I did have a, a relatively small HT get together with oh, nice. uh, two gentlemen named Zach Gingerman and Wade Young, and um, they're newcomers to the group. So awesome! Uh, look forward to being able to get to see their theaters. So, so they did that at your house, or yeah, we came... did that at my house. Okay. We did the this is Cinerama and the various assorted widescreen things. And both these people were very into computers, so we talked a lot about HC Web Remote um, and uh, some of the other stuff that I use for automation. They were very interested in that. Awesome! Always good to see newcomers. Rusty, what about you? Any any new? gear anything new that you're planning on upgrading to yeah i haven't changed i don't think i've really changed much since the last time we talked um the two big areas well one main area i want to work on is acoustics i've got a pretty basic setup but it wasn't done very uh scientifically i just kind of put some panels up <laughs> the i feel like there's probably a lot of room for improvement. And then after I do that, then I would want to you know, recalibrate. And I'm interested in learning how to manually calibrate to get, um, to see if I can do better than what Dirac can do. Um, I don't know, but that seems to be a, I, there's a lot of talk about it. It's something I want to explore more, uh, but there's not a whole lot of point in doing that to you now down the room acoustics and that, topic uh frankly there's just it it's like a hobby in and of itself it seems like the, the depth of design so i want to learn about it but i quite frankly haven't had a free minute I'm, I'm barely having i've barely had enough time to watch movies and i <laughs> i hate that so we have been uh we started watching masters of the air Thing. yeah oh Apple yeah tv have you seen that i am so i am a couple a couple episodes in i need to finish watching it because i think i had started watching it and i was on like a 
I was on like an Apple TV Plus like free trial or something, mm-hmm. <laughs> and it ran out, and I was like, eh. So, but then I actually I saw another promo. They had a pretty good deal for like two months or three months. So yeah. I need to go back and finish watching that. But it's it's not bad so far. Yeah, we're I think we're six episodes in, and we my wife and I are really enjoying it. And it was it's been interesting to learn how you start googling things and going how true is it, and it seems that it's actually pretty historically accurate um, huh. so we, we've enjoyed that and the, see what was it the other night we watched this is the new the newest hunger games movie um where it's like oh, songbird sequel. songbird and snakes yeah, yeah i watched that on the plane a couple weeks ago i went to california Aww. so <laughs> i thought it was that it was good it was it was <laughs> it was on it a plane and i was <laughs> <Come on>. blasphemy <laughs> i know i know first time i've done it <laughs> Uh, Go ahead, I thought it was good, not great. I preferred the older ones, but um, I still enjoyed it. It was it was fun to see. Kind of, I like the origin stories. Um, all right, what else in terms of upgrades? Uh, the only other upgrade, I I kind of want to add some more cross and actuators, but uh, you know I don't know if that's going to happen in the near term. But I feel like there's more to be had there. That's about nice. it. John, about you. Hey, R two D two. What's your boy's name? Yeah, drop Steve that in the chat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe it is. Maybe if, maybe if we can get, we'll, we'll give him a shout out if uh, if he's still watching. Yeah, definitely. We'll try try to get him. You know, hook him early. <laughs> right. <laughs> get him when they're young. Um, yeah. So, so what have I been doing? Or uh, uh, any any home, any home theater updates? I know you said you haven't really changed your holiday or anything planned. I know you want to expound on yeah. that maybe a little bit. Yeah, well, well, obviously, you know, we all want larger um, Kaleidoscape storage. If you have a Kaleidoscape, there's always, usually for most people, uh, there's always a, an update. Vincent! Hi, Vincent. What's going on, Vincent? Keep watching us. We might say something interesting eventually. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm glad you're watching. Um, yeah, but yeah, there's, there's usually, usually you can update and expand your storage capacity for Kaleidoscape. And actually they just came out with, uh, someone can help me like a 96, 92, yeah. 96 and se- 96 like and 72, that. or I don't know. They just, they just upgraded, they just <laughs> increased it again. And I think with that top one, um, I don't know if you've done, I, I don't think you've done a video on this yet, but, uh. If you buy two of the 96, is that what it is? The 96 terabytes? Let's see here. We have... If you buy two of them, <laughs> they will put every Kaleidoscape movie on there for you. Wow. <laughs> that's crazy. Wait, do you have to pay for the movies also? Or do... No, I think that's like the deal. Like a promo? Like if you buy two of them, we'll put the movies on there for you. Like every movie they have in their library. That's the rumor. I, I, I haven't hmm. read it. I haven't read it's got obviously it's in writing somewhere because the person that said it didn't pull it out of their nose. But um So, so seventy two right. and ninety six terabytes so is what they have. Ninety six plus ninety six. Um I I, 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 I how how much what what is what is the US dollar for that? Because I don't even know. I mean I'm, I'm just I want a twenty two terabyte man. 22 terabyte. Yeah. I, I'm I not think, looking at a 96. Yeah, that's I I, I want to say that was something like $30,000 or something. I saw I times saw pricing two. somewhere and I was just, yeah, times two. I'm like Yeah. All right, like at, at that point I understand people's <laughs> you know. Yeah. So like yeah, for that then they they throw in a uh, you know, 3,000 movies, you know. Good on them. But yeah, so so obviously there's always rooms to upgrade with your um, terabyte capacity, whether it be for Clyde Escape or if you, you know, have, you know, your own home theater computer or whatever. Um, yeah, I think just movies like I, I did watch uh, Songbird and Snakes recently, and my boys actually like that more. The, I've talked to a few people that enjoyed that more than The Hunger Games. I think it was written better. I think it is mm. a better story. Um, I think they did really well at um, just talking about kind of the origin and how it filters in and you get some of the, um, you know, the fan service 
if you followed the original um, Hunger Games, you can see where some of those ideas were born and some of the original characters, although though they're younger. Um, so it is interesting to see that. And I think it was very, very well written. It definitely had some home theater aspects to it, to great, you know, audio mix and some good visuals. Mm-hmm. Um, so that was, I, I, I enjoyed that a lot. I watched that, oh, I don't know, a little while back. Um, and I'd wa- then I watched, um, I hadn't seen it yet in my theater. I watched The Covenant, um, not, not The Covenant, not Guy Ritchie's Covenant. That's, that's amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, about the Afghan, mm. no, no, not the Afghan war. Um, what, 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 what was that? That was, yeah. I, I think it that. was Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, it was Afghanistan. Um, that was great. That site, but Alien Covenant. I watched that the mm. other day for the first time in the theater, and I enjoyed that. That was really cool. Getting you know, getting ready for Romulus. That's supposed to be out relatively soon in the next couple months. So I was going through some of those prequels and you know, getting caught up. And I'll then I'll watch Alien, and I'll probably watch Aliens because <laughs> why not? Um, I, I ha- actually, and I haven't bought Alien 3 yet. Alien 3, decent. Alien 4, what's that one called? That one's tough. That one's a rough watch. I don't know what that one's called. Spoiler alert, she comes back to life. Um, it's Alien Resurrection. Resurrection? Does that sound right? Um, you know, where, where they were Sigourney yeah, Weaver's that's in that's it again. That's so it. That, one's, that one's a little rough. <laughs> but 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 Alien Three was good, and if anyone knows the history of that, it was um, a rough production, so it made for a rough a rougher movie. I think there might have been a couple directors, and there was definitely some uh, stress on the set. But I enjoyed Alien Three, okay. But of course, Alien and Aliens are classic. So, but I did enjoy Covenant. It was a great home theater watch, and that was fun to do. So. Yeah, a couple movies here and there, and that's it. Just enjoying my my theater when I can. Nice. And Doyle. So, obviously, if you've watched watched the channel, you've seen the the updated tour that I did with Doyle. So, he's got quite a new <laughs> some new upgrades. Doyle, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, uh, I was trying to get my computer to host this, but it's it's disagreeing, so I'm gonna leave it alone. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so you know, I, I stacked the uh, my my original subs in the front, the prolisans, and I got a two JTR RS twos in the rear corners, and then a hard bottle M twenty four in the behind the main listening position. And ever since the um, the the home the, the second home theater tour, I haven't done a thing. <laughs> <laughs> I've been playing Spider Man two with my son a lot. <laughs> oh, okay, the game. Yeah, the game is pretty awesome. <laughs> what what is the what is the audio experience like on that? Because I played the first one. I don't have a PlayStation anymore, but it gets overwhelming at, like after a while because you know really it, it, yeah. So so on that on that TV, right? I'm so close to it. It feels like uh, it's like you're actually in the city, right? Mm-hmm. Especially at night because it's you know with the the true black level. It's like the buildings, the light from the buildings twinkle and whatnot. It's pretty cool. Okay. So the swinging is really cool. The fights are awesome. The explosions are visceral. So, you know, you can just go from fight to fight in that game. And it's like, uh, <laughs> after like 20 minutes, it's like, okay, this is a lot. But it's, it's fun. Um, audio is good. They got, I think they got Dolby Atmos in there too. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, we like it. And um, he, he already beat the game, so he tries and that tell me. Like what's where stuff is. <laughs> he's he's a good son. <laughs> That's funny. And um upgrade wise, I did make four uh speaker stands for the, the side towers and the rear towers because mm. you know they're supposed to be the tweeter's supposed to be at your ear just above and it's just below. It that that's technically okay, but I'd rather have it, you know, like six inches above my ears at those distances. So I made those speaker stands, but I've been too lazy to actually like put the speakers on them. They're sitting like they're waiting to be used. And um, today, 
uh, I got a, I got a, like a, a message from a buddy and he was like, Hey, you know, anybody who'd want this symbol for, <laughs> oh, oh no, <laughs> it's a hard model. And another was, one. Oh yeah. Yeah. Another one. And I was like, I was like, I, I thought I, was, I thought I was like Vern. Like I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm okay. I'm done with this. And then, um, he's like, yeah, I was like, well, how much is he asking? And he was like, well, reach out to him. And I did. And I was like, Oh man, mm, I'm, <laughs> See, here's the thing, right? My hard bottle performs great, but that amplifier is a, it's a passive amplifier, right? It has right. a fan on the back. The fan makes noise. Mm. It's a whisper, but I, but I hear it. <laughs> and the guy is selling uh, a hard bottle with the amp already inside of it. <laughs> you know, it's like a plate amp, yeah. which I don't hear. So it's so like technically. Is it the uh, same model like that you have now or is it different? It's uh, so I have the equivalent sort of of a, a co2 he has a co1 but it's like the way cody built it it's nearly a co2 which is i mean my my, my stuff's not even moving in the back so it doesn't really matter <laughs> but just just letting you guys know it never ends like it's ironic that happened yeah. today that's funny so, so what's your what was your sub setup before and you added the jtrs yeah, yeah. So I had um, I had four Perlison D215s in the corners, and I had a D212 uh, behind the main listening position. Okay. But with D-Rack Art, I realized that those the subs that are assigned main, which are mm -hmm. only the front two, they do most of the work. The other subs, they support the front, mm -hmm. and they can be assigned infrasonics if they're, you know, if, like, when a... When Matt uh, Trinkline from Storm Audio did the sweeps, he was like, okay, we can assign the D215s infrasonics, but that D212, no. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted all of the all of the, the big subs to be the main speakers. So that's why I stacked them. And then I had okay. to get something that was clean, but could like match or exceed the output of the stacked D215s, which was... You know, JTR is like the easiest way to do that. So, so now you've got two JTR RS twos. Yeah. So, plus you kept the four D two fifteens. Right. And you still have the two twelve. No, no, the two twelve was sold, and I replaced okay. it with the Har bottle. Oh, now and the Har bottle now. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So, yeah. so is that uh, how, how are you liking that setup now? It's it's too much. Too much. <laughs> it's too Man, much in a good I way. He said it for the record. Yeah. It's too much. <laughs> too much. <laughs> oh, yeah. Cool. Way, so Rusty, I looked up, I looked Rusty up pulled that, up that uh, info. You want to tell him? It, yeah. So yeah, go ahead and share it if you can. While so you're doing that. I don't um, think it's as amazing as I was led to believe. They'll install them for you. But yeah, I, well, I, I and it's you a don't... package deal. Mm. Here, let me so see if it'll let me. Present. Out of their good graces, they'll they'll put all the movies on there, but you still got to pay. I think there's a price tag attached. I'm sure. But if oh, you're yeah. buying two, if you're buying two ninety sixes, you got the money. <laughs> chump change. It's no big deal. So it's good for that person that, and and you have to guy you have to buy the uh, the <clears throat> the player too. So it's for someone that doesn't have anything has money burning a hole in their pocket and then they get everything they want. And then every movie they have at the time of the purchase. And yeah, then it's so, a, so it's a package deal. So it's not free movies. It's a halo Jordan, package. There you go. Oh, that uh, looks cool. 90. Oh my God. That's a house, dude. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe a mobile there, home. Oh, you found a yeah, man, a horrible. You found a price. Oh, $95,000. So <laughs> the benefit isn't that you get the movies for free. They just save you the time of downloading, downloading. all right. of those movies. Yeah. So Good this is them. the only place I could actually find a price on yeah. it. Yeah. Well, yeah, because that's yeah, wild. It's a dealer type thing. <laughs> Holy <5, 000>. moly! <laughs> hey, that's, that's amazing. All. Good for go whoever's doing that. They probably uh, have a yacht, and it's going on their yacht, so they don't have to be hooked up to the internet. Yep. Good for them. I, I want to know Good the percentage them. of 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 Cloud Escape current users that are actually like 
buying that because I imagine it's very, very like even if yeah. you're even if you're loaded to the max, man, that's that's still a pretty penny to like. And, and then how do you get the the wife to approve off on that if you're married? <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a. Tough you're sending though. her to the French Riviera for right. a couple months. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a there's a compromise and a heavy compromise in there. Do you see E E Evangelist uh, question about Apple TV? Yeah, let me uh, let me star that so I can. Where's that back? Uh, I mean, yeah, uh, okay, I, I guess I agree I, when when that happens, <clears> but. <throat> You know, okay, you can go I over that when you want to, but yeah, I start it so we can uh, yeah, come back to want. those. So Rusty, the other Rusty has uh, he made some upgrades. He says he changed my front. I changed my front left and right to. I always forget, is it D- Dyne Audio? Dyne Audio. Dyne Audio Evoke Twenty is nice. That's a considerable upgrade, and my surrounds to a better model clip. Interesting. So is so he still got the the center? Or yeah, is it just so he. I know a little bit about this. Um, he, he's been, I can't remember how it started, but he was, I think auditioning, listening to some speakers at maybe it was Nebraska furniture mart or something. And, uh, in that process, he saying, well, I kind of think I may prefer this or prefer that. And I said, well, if you want to like listen to some different speakers in your setup, um, and just, do a long-term audition. I've got speakers just everywhere in my, around my house. Cause I have a hard time letting go of things. So I <laughs> said, well, I've got, I got some Dyn audio speakers. If you want to listen to them or, you know, do a long-term, you know, uh, audition, then you're welcome to test them out. I'm like, I'm not trying to sell them to you. just, you know, just try it. He's like, Oh yeah, that'd be kind of nice. You know, what does it hurt? So he took them <laughs> home and, I think that night he uh, texted me like a few hours later. He's like, holy cow, these things are amazing. Like it is like <laughs> game changing. So, so was, it, was it cleaner? Was it clearer? Was it just louder, but not? Maybe he can I mean, comment I know he's... more in the chat. But I, I, what I recall, he was saying it was just about like better in every way. Um, hmm. And at first, he he started with them in the living room, and the intention was for them to be like the living room speakers. They looked a little nicer. They're um, they were better for you know. There's no acoustic treatments or anything, so it's, he said it's kind of sounded better there. And then he enjoyed it so much, and he was like, hey, "Well, do you want to sell them?" And I'm like, "Well, yeah, I guess so." You know, <laughs> like, I need to let go of some stuff. I'm, I've been yeah. a, I've been collecting too much. And so uh, I sold it to him and gave him a good deal. And so then he said a few, like a week later, he's like, well, I moved him to the primary home theater. And he's <laughs> inevitable. He said, now I want more that match because they're just, he said it was game changer. But uh, man, I wish, I wish he would stop babysitting his kid and join <laughs> the chat and tell you and speak for himself. Vincent's fine. Just. Get on. Yeah, right. he's he's put, one. He put can Vince take care in front of, of a movie. He's good. Yeah, <laughs> he'll be fine. So, are those are those speakers bookshelf or are they four standards towers? Uh, these are bookshelves, but they're like big bookshelf. Um, man, I don't know. Here, it's this big by. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, so he's got to put them on a stand anyway. Yeah, mm-hmm. they're pretty. They're they're sizable bookshelf speakers and they sound i mean they sound like towers they're nice what's the frequency range on those um i have to look it up i can look it up real quick okay yeah he, the only thing and he may hate me for saying this the only thing he needs now is a matching center exactly that's what i was asking because he said he did his his left and right so i was like oh i guess he still got the uh the clips because that'll make a big difference i haven't heard those speakers but just having i've been in that situation before where i had um oh look who we got here y'all hey. y'all, y'all bullied him into <laughs> it's about time <laughs> oh, crap. we will corrupt oh, everyone <laughs> oh he's watching oh, us on the big screen oh nice i am <laughs> well i'm glad you could join and speak for yourself well i don't know how long i'll be here but 
No worries. Um, so, yeah, more on the Dine Audios. So basically, yeah, put those in the living room. Um, and they were just far <clears throat> superior to the Klipsch towers I had in there. Um, more clear, much more smooth uh, frequency response. Um, but what was weird is you didn't notice the difference that much compared to once I brought them into the theater room, it was like massive difference, but I think it's because um, the acoustics are way better in my theater room. Oh, if you hear my son, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I saw him running in there. It's okay, Vincent. It's um, time for him to make his YouTube debut. <laughs> I know. Say hey, say hello. What's up, man? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Camera shy. Um, but yeah, once I put them in the theater room, it was just like, wow, you could really tell the difference versus uh, the living room. So, and then my room's smaller. So mm -hmm. I was, I'm still able to hit reference levels and not be like at positive DB. I'm still like negative two on my receiver. So, um, so yeah, it works out well, but yeah, now I've got to upgrade my center channel. Uh, <laughs> definitely the center channel, the surrounds later, but centers like it has to happen soon because it does, does really bother me. So it's pretty obvious that it, they sound different. Very obvious. <laughs> I would so that, expect so, because those are way different style speakers, yeah. too. Well, and then I think part of this is, like, just learning what I like, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. True. And I do like, a, so Dyn Audio, it's a pretty neutral speaker, but it does roll off a little bit at the very top end. But I like that. Um, whereas the clips are kind of the reverse of that. <laughs> they They kind of peak at the top end. And it gets harsh, and they're not. Clips isn't bad. I don't want to like rag on it. It's it's not. Yeah, I like clips too, actually. <laughs> yeah, just just figuring out my preferred uh, sound, really. Yeah, I agree with you. That's why I like the Polks that I have, is they're relatively subdued on the extreme high end. They don't have that harsh metallic sound that the. Uh, Horn tweeters and and some of the clips in part. Yeah, so that that just means Rusty Rusty Mitch, you're a bad influence. Oh, I'm a good <laughs> influence. I, he he enjoys his theater experience even more today than he ever did. That's right. That's right. <laughs> see, see, we got I, some comments looked, in here. The frequency response, what I'm seeing, is 40 hertz to 23 kilohertz, which seems a bit, I'm kind of surprised that it plays either that high and that low. But It um, plays that low. You know what's, what was very surprising? So when I first plugged them in, I compared them to the Klipsch Towers I had in here mm -hmm. um, that have two eights, eight-inch drivers in each tower. And... The Dynaudios put out more bass, more low end than those towers did. Wow. And I was like, what is going on? <laughs> so I play them. At first, I was like, well, um, I was playing the clips in the calibrated, my calibration. Uh, so I put them both to pure, played them back to back, and they, they have more bass. They really do. That's crazy. Of course, I'm not really utilizing that. Once I, I uh, EQ'd them, you know, I, I'm handing that off to the subs. But just by themselves, with no subs, they did go lower than my uh, RP-82s. Nice. Or sorry, RF-82s. So is, is that, are those speakers, is that a speaker line that they're still manufacturing? Like, can you even find a center channel if you, if yes. you want to? Okay. Oh, okay, so let's see. We got some comments here. Rob says, we need to schedule a Houston meetup to talk about all our recent upgrades. We're missing Emire here tonight. I'm not sure who that is. Imad. Oh, Imad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll be, that's, yeah, I'll be filming his home theater next month. Right? That's Imad. Yeah. Okay, cool. 
Uh, let's see, we got some. Let me check these start comments. Uh, Evangelista says, do y'all think the TV can crush K-Scape if it allows us to download 4K Atmos movies for playback with the ability mean, to Apple select? TV. Oh, Apple TV. Apple TV. Oh, yeah. Well, he's, uh, okay. Do y'all think I mean, the Apple TV will... Oh, that's a different comment. Hold on. Okay, so Apple TV. Do y'all think the Apple TV can crush K-Scape if it allows us to download 4K Atmos movies for playback with the ability to select and create files and, and scenes? Should do that. Mm, I don't know, man. I mean, you're still talking about download, like you're still talking about streaming unless Apple TV decides to like store stuff locally, which I don't think they're going to do because then they'd have to expand their storage. You're yeah, still going to be, even if they do have one-to-one -one copy of like Kscape, you're still talking about the limiting factor is going to be people's ISPs. So, you know, because you're still going to have to stream it. And then the and then the, the rate right the the bit rate, the bit rate yeah. so I mean if everything it, everything being equal yeah if if it was a a one to one and it was download it was you know disc quality mm -hmm. yeah Apple would crush their <laughs> Apple I mean the price point but, yeah <laughs> but they're still streaming so if it was downloadable and then you know you have the Apple Drive sitting there yeah I mean they're just not yet in that they're really not in that market they're not i mean kscape is a very legal monopoly i mean mm -hmm. someone else could do it but who else has the deal the um right movie deals the deal with the, the theaters right now besides them so they kind of you know but, but yeah app, app, the, the market's there for it if if apple wants to come in and undercut and wipe them out they could probably do uh, it but i, I think well, and, and you touched on the, the agreements, you know, with the, uh, the, oh my goodness, not, not the producers, but the, uh, movie with the studios. studios. Yeah, with the yeah. production companies. Yeah. 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 But if anybody has the ability, like the kind of pool that you would need to make that happen, because you got to think back, the, the fights legal, the legal battles that Apple fought back in the early MP3 days when they were fighting the record labels against, um, uh, CDs and they're saying like with the, the original iPod, the pre iPhone and pre everything, the iPod, they had to do a lot to convince the record labels to allow them to do MP3s and digital music. And it took them a long time to get them on board. But once they realized like, this is the future. Well now like, people what's a cd you know <laughs> we, we don't even i don't even know if you can buy i think you can still buy cds but i don't know anybody you can. that does me i haven't bought you one do? in a while but i still buy yeah if i can if it's a if it's an album that or from like an artist that i really like i will buy the the disc and rip it to flack so but, but why most of i mean most of those cds that are being released these days are boutique type labels yeah. uh, people that have bought the masters and then release them under you know under potentially a different label um, the other comment on the apple and streaming is it's not just the bandwidth to the end user it's the bandwidth throughout the entire network and how far the servers are away from the end user mm -hmm. so the cost of doing that from an infrastructure standpoint is substantial. Um, the thing about a download is it gets downloaded once. The thing about streaming is every time somebody watches it, they're eating that bandwidth over and over again. Mm -hmm. That's true. So it's a right. cost. It's a cost standpoint for Apple, as well as a user bandwidth issue. But and I'm I can sure. I'm see... oh, sorry. Oh no, I was just gonna say, and I'm sure, like. That would that also change all kinds of like contracts because I'm sure like in able, in able to store it if they were going to do that store it locally or download it they'd have to have a whole new contract. And I don't think Apple, I don't think they have any interest because Apple is very broad in their reach, and they know the average person doesn't care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They just don't care enough to have disc quality. They're fine with their streaming. So why would Apple spend billions to create this infrastructure on their own hard drives and go after 
the small niche market of of a K scape or even you know those that have a a plex or whatever and they're trying to catch more i don't think enough people care in the average household so i don't think apple has any desire because their streamings are great mm -hmm. <laughs> i guarantee yeah. you for a lot of it i could watch a stream and not know it until the end you know if you blind comparison and i bet there's some that i wouldn't know any difference now if i do back to back a b real quick i can tell just because the audio's less and it's not as mm -hmm. dynamic but vis video wise visual the, uh it's gonna be <laughs> hard to tell apple's apple's getting great i oh, i agree that, that's what i watched um Rusty, you talked about um, that you are watching Masters, Masters of the Year. I watch. I started watching at. It's but is that Netflix? I started watching that three body, three body system, three body. I want to three Netflix. were body problem. Three I body see problem. That. But yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm only like three episodes <clears throat> in. That's pretty trippy. But anyway, I, I forgot that was. That's the streaming that I'm watching right now. Is that yeah. a must watch? Hmm. It's captive. It's enough to keep you going. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so I wasn't, I, you know, I, I think it's done now. So I wanted to, to wait. So I'm watching like two episodes at a time. Um, yes, it's enough. They're like, oh, I got to watch another one. Like what's happening? Because you're trying to figure out what's going on. So I'm not to the full effect of what's going on. Like, I don't want to ruin it because it's such a new program. Mm -hmm. You don't really know if what's happening is really happening. So you want to tune in again to see, is that really happening? And, you know, another one that did that, if you don't mind me saying, is... I was blown the everything about the first season of um, True Detective with McConaughey and I've never seen those Woody Harrelson. Maybe. Watch it. The first season, and we're talking. When was that? Ten years ago? Has it been that it long? Since the first it was a long season, time or? ago. Oh wow! Yeah, it. I might be wrong, <clears throat> but it seems like it was quite a while ago. It was awesome. And I, then I didn't really hear great things, even though there were some excellent actors attached to the uh, the proceed or the, the the following seasons. I didn't watch any of the others, but then I I watched season four. Oh gosh, and I'm gonna forget everyone that's in it. It's Helen Hunt and some other very good actors. I just I apologize, um, but that really hooks you too because it's almost like X Files. You're like, what's really happened? Like, like, did they go to the, like, totally to the supernatural? Because you know, I was, <laughs> I just heard some great things about season four, and I liked one so much, but then they started going almost X Files like ish on it, and I'm like, where are they going with this? So you keep tuning in to say, is there, is this really what they say? So I'm, you know, again, I won't ruin it because that's a newer, um, it's like Lost. Uh, yeah, yeah so you keep watching like what's really happening. <laughs> My yeah. favorite is show it supernatural of all time. or is there something else behind it? So yeah, newest True Detective was really good because it's beyond like a regular mystery. Season one of True Detective is still amazing, uh, very gritty and uh, raw. Like just it's good, oh, right but uh, True uh, Three Body Problem, I'm I'm enjoying that. So if anyone has not. Does, hasn't heard of it or is wanting to pull the trigger, I think it's worth it. it at least the three or four episodes I'm into it. it it's a lot of fun. Yeah, and I visually, keep... <clears throat> it's incredible. Like, just I the keep visual. Hearing about it. Yeah, it, the, the visual is is really good. They do they, they, high production value for sure. Cool. So all right, I'm, say, I'm Apple's convinced. Great. Apple TV <laughs> I'm convinced great. I'll watch it. Yeah, I think you'll enjoy it. So talk about that visuals and, you know, bit rates and stuff like that. Are large TVs the future of home theater? Advantages and disadvantages. So anybody that hasn't been following the home theater community, the you know, entertainment community, large TVs are starting to get bigger and they're starting to come down in price by a lot. I think I think Hisense, TCL, a couple, uh, a couple other manufacturers have like 100 plus inch TVs for like five grand and under. Mm -hmm. Under, so, yeah. The big, the big question is, and I'm sure we all have our own, I, I'm pretty sure I know where we'll probably all stand, but I want to talk about that uh, because, well, I mean, we have Doyle here. Doyle can talk about it. I'll let him talk about it first. But my biggest thing is with the TV, like if you start going 
bigger than like a 75, 100 inch, you start being limited on your speaker placement. And because now you're talking about putting your center channel below the TV or above, most of the time it's probably going to be below. And now you've got to like try to figure out how to angle the, 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 you know, the speaker, the tweeter's not going to be level. So Doyle, you've, you've, you've had both. What, what is your, for those people that haven't watched the, the Hope Theater tour, why did you switch from, uh, you had a hundred and was it 130 inch screen? No, like 113 or 113. 110, okay. uh, diagonal scope screen. And, um, I had my center channel behind it at one point. Right. And it, it's, it's really cool actually, <laughs> like having the sound come from the screen. It was cool, but um at, believe it or not the screen was a little too close for me and so <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. so i backed the screen up and i put the uh, the center channel under it and um it's not it's not perfect like that but it's definitely good enough and so that's one issue i have now though i have a 80 i have a 83 and it's quite close to the main listening position but if i go with a 98 or 100 i'm not going to lower that center channel any lower then it'll, it'll be like it'll just I think I have like the perfect balance for me. If I lower any lower, it's going to be too low. It's going to be distracting for me. And so if I keep it where it is, which I will, and I go with the bigger TV, it's going to be 16 by nine, uh, what dimensions. Mm-hmm. My TV is going to be so tall. I want to look up at it. And, um, like when I watch stuff on YouTube, the screen will be too big. It'll be huge mungus. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. um, for a PlayStation as well, you know, I game quite a bit in that room for movies. It'll be beautiful. But you know it's a balance of all of them for me, so I'm just I'm just relaxing with what I have for now. So why did you why did you switch from uh, a projector? And you had a pretty you had like a cream of the cream projector because you had the you had the JVC NZ9 right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you had your projector. So I know a lot of people in the comments are like, why did you go from you know away from such a, a nice projector? Gosh. So yeah, why did you switch <laughs> to because- to a TV? Because I can hear it all the time. <laughs> so basically when you could have the volume low and, you know, with ambient noise, it's amazing. You can't hear it, right? It and was your your projector was like what? Sorry to cut you off. Your projector was what? Me, what, like five or six feet from, right behind you? Yeah, five or six feet behind me. That, okay. I'd say that. And like up, like maybe three feet or okay. so, four so feet. So it's relatively close. Me. It's pretty close. And so I designed two <clears throat> hush boxes. And the first, the second was quite good. I could not hear anything. Like, you'd have to turn everything in the room off, turn the projector on. With medium lamp mode, I could barely, like, it, it didn't matter, right? It was barely per- perceivable, perceptible. In high mode, in a quiet scene, like, you know, when it goes silent for, like, two seconds, I could hear it. Like, it was just enough to annoy me. And so that's just a personal thing that I have, like, any noise I want it I want it out of the room but that's that's basically the main reason and also uh for gaming I could tell there was just a, a little like compared to an OLED the saturation the HDR just you know it's like 10 percent it just what wasn't quite there which was strange because for animated movies that NZ9 was just like an OLED but for other scenes like neutral scenes it you could there's a stark difference right mm-hmm. but um yeah it was basically like little things that kind of bugged me and worrying about the temperature i'm always checking on the projector i'd pause a movie and check like <laughs> is it over here is it getting hot in there you know it was like, in a hush box is it was in a hush box yeah. yeah did it so, did it cause any problems with the hush box or yeah. oh no 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 like um okay. yeah the second design was a lot better and well uh, send me and your then, second design because i want to test it out Okay, yeah, I can do that. That'd be cool, because yeah. I, I, I'm i with you on fan noise. Okay. <laughs> but I'm yeah, not giving up my 150-inch screen, so. <laughs> I respect that. <laughs> How big is your TV? Only 83. Okay, so you went from a, a 110. To an 83. I moved it about a foot and a half closer. But that's your temporary TV, right? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of liking it, believe really? me. Really? <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm kind of liking it. Um, so for gaming, it's literally perfect because it fills the whole frame. But for movies, you know, it's <laughs> and mm-hmm. um, but it's still I'm like, this is it's, hey, when the prices of an OLED 90 something inches finally comes down, <laughs> like like a little less than half what they are now, 
then we'll yeah. consider it. But and so you have what what model TV? I missed. It's a uh, a Sony A eighty L. So it was last year's flagship. Was it their flagship? Their uh, flagship was a uh, one notch up, but it its biggest size was seventy seven inches. Mm, okay. So I just. <clears throat> And yours was 88? 83. 83. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. Vern, what, what is your thoughts on, uh, I'm pretty sure I know what your answer is going to be, but what are your <laughs> thoughts on uh, on large large format TVs versus... Not until you, they curve them. Yeah, right. <laughs> and, uh, and, actually, I have two curved, uh, not large format. I think one's a 40-something and the other is a 50-something diagonal in the house but one of them's in the bedroom and the other one's up in my lab upstairs where i have all my pcs okay. and do oh, my yeah, editing work one, yeah. and do my editing work um the curve is not as important to me when it comes to a uh, a tv as is the difference between reflected light and emitted light you know what comes off a, a flat panel just doesn't look natural to me and that's probably my background in theaters and film for years and years and years. But um, the other thing that I've noticed with larger TVs, the larger they get in the flat panels, the more uniformity problems they seem to have. Um, they don't have the contrast necessarily, so they use local dimming. And, you know, when you have a thousand by a thousand pixels covered by a single local dimming, uh, path mm -hmm. um, things just don't look right for me on on a TV now in my bedroom as a computer monitor hey no problem but in a movie theater or a home theater I just can't buy that no matter how big they get besides the fact they're never going to get it in some people's houses yeah that's true unless they start using the pieces where they're segmented in sections mm -hmm. and then you have a whole nother set of color balance matching issues mm -hmm. because each segment um, has to be tuned individually to match to a standard so for me it's it's just a no-go in in a in a home theater yeah and I'm, I'm i'm with you on that like for me i feel like i mean having a nice tv with you know brightness is great but i feel like i just don't I don't get that cinematic feel watching a movie on a TV like I do with a, a projector. There's just like you said, this, it looks a little bit more natural, at least to my eyes. I mean, the uh, other factor is in a home theater, <clears throat> the rooms are usually treated for light. They're 100 percent dark. So so what if the flat panel can do 2000 right. nits? You're never going to use it unless you want to burn out your eyeballs in a, in a blacked out room. So, you know, that that's the other thing. You know, living room, bedroom, uh, even a, a, a computer room where you've got lights on is one thing. Putting it in a home theater where you have light control is a totally different animal. Rusty B, what are your thoughts on that? If you... I'm still here. Okay. I'm in the playroom now. <laughs> but, um, I mean, the black levels are, that's the main reason, right? So for an OLED, even in a, even in a controlled light environment, the black levels of an OLED are far superior. So large format TVs, if you're talking LED, I mean, it, it will be better, but I'm still, I'm not sold. But if they could do large format OLED, I mean, the black levels are going to be superior because there's no light, yep. you know. Um, so, but yeah, when you come to what Vern was talking about being segmented, that could present challenges. And well, much ju just hiding the segments, you know, mm -hmm. and not having lines. But if there was a way... Like, really, I'm thinking if they could make, like, a 110, 115-inch screen to where it's, like, it's rolled up like a piece of paper, you know? Mm -hmm. And you can just unroll it and mount it on your wall. There's somebody out there. I think there was either at this this year's CES or last year's CES. Somebody had something 
like that. But you're, I mean, you're talking about like, it's not even, and yeah, they the said that it, you can, there. yeah, it's, yeah. you can buy it, but it's like, you're talking like a million know, bucks. <laughs> yeah. yeah. $250,000 or something. So it's like, it's not even, nobody's no, no consumer is going to buy that unless you're, you have a mansion and you know, a yacht Ferrari. and stuff like that. Ferrari. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I do. I do think, I mean, the JVCs are amazing, but when when it comes to black levels, the OLED has it hands down. Yeah, but does OLED have the uniformity <clears throat> issues uh, in terms of Depends color a over a over a yeah. wider area of the screen? That that's my concern with them. Yeah, if you go up to like a 115 inch, because I'm sure you could get like a. 65 and the uniformity is really good but mm -hmm. fortunately yeah. i can't tell uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just gonna do this <laughs> yeah you start you start getting into a whole host of problems with that you know uniformity and then speaker placement and then like with those with those panels like you're talking about you got to worry about heat and then i think you have to have like uh you can't i don't think you can just plug it into like your regular outlet like you got to get like a you know, 20 amp or, or even, you know, higher just to run it. And so you, now you're talking about energy and like, I think those, those, yeah. those, those panels, they put off some, I think that's one of the biggest problems right now is that they put off some heat. So not only is that going to heat up your room, but then the heat, you know, is like electronics is worst thing. So I think they have issues with that, with like the panels, you know, basically failing because of the, the heat. So, um, I think, I think it's good to have the option but like mm -hmm. like a video wall i would never put that for me personally in my in my theater just because of the you know the speaker placement and stuff like that rusty mensch what what, oh. what are your thoughts oh go ahead rusty no i was like oh you just saying that i'm like oh crap what about uh acoustic transparent mm -hmm. <laughs> i didn't yeah, think of that you can't you can't like yeah. i know that i've heard that they said that they there's a way that they could do it but me personally i don't think that's ever going to be a legitimate one to one, like having your having a acoustically transparent screen. That is, yeah, there's just I no way. I wouldn't think so. In in commercial theaters that have tried that, they've had to use some sort of reflection system mm. where the speakers are aimed at the screen, and then uh, the sound is reflected off the screen. But you know, obviously, you're going to lose the positioning and and things like yep. that that you would have with a normal theater system. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Good point, Rusty Minch. What are your, what are your thoughts? Um, so <clears throat> I have I own both. I have a seventy-seven OLED in the living room, and love that. I personally rarely watch it. The family uses that more. I have a hundred and fifty-inch projection screen, acoustic transparent in the theater. For me, in a theater. I've, I've done it both ways. I've done TV and I've done um, projection screen. For a blacked out light controlled theater, to me, I want that size. I want the immersion. And there's still not a TV out there that gets close for any, you know, reasonable amount of money. And I mean, reasonable, like under 100 grand. And I'm talking like, I want a 150 inch TV. There is nothing out there under a hundred thousand dollars for and and i'm not even saying that's my price point i'm just saying like they're really expensive now i know that the you know the 100 is getting to be pretty 100 inch range is getting to be very reasonable um even some in like the 110 inch range um still just doesn't satisfy me for a blacked out light controlled theater now um i do want to say so my personal preference, I'm gonna I want wall to wall immersion. I like my speakers right behind the screen, um, acoustic transparent, and until there's something TV that compares with you know like an NZ9 price, probably not that interested. But I have this discussion, and I'm gonna shout out to Damien, friend of mine, home theater enthusiast, and we've had this debate back and forth on TV versus projector. And I say, yeah, for my application in my home theater, uh, to me, there's it's like 
projections the option for me. Um, however, like I use in the living room, I use a TV and, and he had some good points that I'd be remiss if I didn't bring up to kind of uh, balance out the arguments. Um, you know, TVs, perfect blacks, somebody already mentioned that, but you're just not getting that out of a, uh, uh, projector. Um, you know, the cost to make a, an all blacked out light controlled room is not insignificant. Like that's a, you have to really commit yourself to make a, to, to build out that sort of room. It's not, it's not going to make a great living room. And projectors in living rooms are terrible because they're not really attractive. Um, they, they're, they're unsightly. And I'm not saying you can't make it work, but there's some pretty big compromises if mm -hmm. you're doing a family room, a non-dedicated theater. Uh, they're they're kind of ugly. Um, <laughs> and, and, and you're going to have all sorts of stray light. And to me, if you're going to have any amount of stray light, like even a little bit, it's just the deal breaker for projection. It just, it ruins it. Um, mm -hmm. See, what was the other points he made? He said uh, he wants something else to consider, G-Sync for gaming. That's a big deal mm -hmm. to him. Uh, Dolby Vision. Um, yeah, that's another. None of the projectors that I am aware of, none of the projectors support Dolby Vision. So if that's important Not to real. you. Not real. Like there's some that are marketed. There's some... Uh, Oh, ultra short the, throws uh, that the ultra th short throws yeah that that's not it, and i don't want to upset any <laughs> sponsors on the haterade cowboy channel <laughs> but that's a marketing ploy like thx certified i don't believe any mm -hmm. projector is doing that one one thing to add on that is dolby vision's really unless you can take advantage of those nits it's it's kind of pointless yeah the, the reason why yeah. The reason why ultra short throws are have some of those have the Dolby Vision is because they're so. Because I remember I asked that I was like, why can't we get Dolby Vision on projectors, but they have them on ultra short, ultra short throws? Ultra short throws are considered TVs, even though they're not a TV, but because they're so close to the screen and the light, because Adobe has certain restrictions or certain qualifications to be able to certify something as with Dolby Vision, like you said, <coughs> NITS is a big thing brightness level so because i guess ultra short throws are such much closer to those screens then it's able to get brighter and they're able to i guess pass i don't i don't know i'm sure dolby has like different criteria for those ultra short throws but from what i've heard is that basically long throw projectors are probably never going to get that certification because they can't hit those required nit levels yeah dolby vision Actually, part of the uh, specification is the size of the screen and the distance and the brightness. So <clears throat> if, as soon as you throw a, a conventional projector in the mix with a throw of anywhere from 15 to 25 feet and the various zoom and aperture sizes that you're going to use, um, there's no way that you can satisfy Dolby's requirement to know exactly what that brightness nit value is going to be at peak. And without that, Dolby Vision just doesn't work. They have to know what the peak brightness is. So I, I would agree. I don't think we're ever going to see a, at least a, a reasonable large projector for a larger room show up with Dolby Vision. Yeah. So that's where something like, and again, we're talking very expensive. That's where something like a mad VR NV or NV extreme comes into where you can manipulate or you can enter in the values of your projector and then the mad VR can adjust to get, you know, a, a, a better HDR experience. But again, you know, you're still limited with the, the nits, but the mad VR can do some pretty impressive stuff. Uh, even with the you know the Mad VR PCs that you guys have, Vern and, and Rusty B, can you know enhance your projector experience, and that's I mean that's free. I mean you still have to invest in a computer if you don't have one. You know you got to download the software, and then there's a lot more tinkering, a lot more time involved. But you know it's not optionless if you have a projector and you want to get you know better HDR levels. Rusty, don't you have a Mark II? Envy. I do. 
Yeah, and it looks good. I've I've seen him. I've seen him a few times. I've seen him uh, in Rusty's. I've seen him in uh, Chris at Home Theater Dues. I've seen him at, at M Wave, and I've seen him at shows. And I mean, they they're impressive, uh, but you know, they're just it's kind of like the the case escape thing. A lot of people probably won't be able to afford them, but if you want to go go down the tinker side, then you can download the free version. That you've just got to spend a lot more time you know doing that uh john wh what are your thoughts would you ever consider going to because i know your center channel right now is below your um below your screen would you ever consider going to a large screen tv yeah, so my or? so my center my center speaker does have an adjustable tweeter so That's it's right, aimable yeah. um i've never had <clears throat> one person complain nope, including myself me. <laughs> yeah no one has ever said, how dare you ruin my theater experience <laughs> by having a uh, center channel below my viewing uh, screen. Um, yeah, I was there. I was like, man, this is going to suck. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, we were I both think, there. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've experienced it, and I will testify on his behalf. It does not suck. Um, it's no. actually wonderful. And what was, I think, really helps it is your room proportions you have enough room that your your distance from your center channel is good enough that the angles are not that far off because it's really about angles not about distances and <clears throat> you have it sounds great it does not sound the slightest bit um, flawed so yeah i mean if you're getting really 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 sensitive to that yeah you might pick up on a little bit i tried to and it the the dialogue's coming right out of their mouths as far as i'm concerned unless i was mm -hmm. trying to be super critical on purpose and hate my own system then maybe i'd notice it <laughs> um and that but, center shuttle is huge too what is it like three or four feet wide hey maybe I'm not that big. It. no i mean i not it's, the, it's not the one i want i want the utopia 1000 focal 1000 utopia which is quite long uh, this is, it, it's the, this is the LCR, the, okay, Focal 1000 LCR in wall center. For, uh, Still a massive so, center. I think actually it's called, it's called L, it's, it's LCR because it can be, it's, it, for a lot of people, they use it for their le, uh, left, right, and center. Okay. Um, and I have it, so I have it horizontal and then it's. And then the, the, the tweeter is you can twist it to make it That's in a right. horizontal position, and then it then it's then you can manipulate it. Um, and it's I don't know it's two feet maybe two feet one inch or so. Um, so it's like twenty five inches maybe. Okay. Um, yeah, like if I could get a hundred and fifty inch flat panel like a micro LED or whatever for the same price as my NZ eight. It doesn't have any heat issues that doesn't have any, you know, color disparity and the uniformity for the same, you know, for the same price. Yeah, I might consider, but technology is just not there. There are there are purposes and, and places for like a micro LED wall mm -hmm. or a super large TV. If you're going to watch sports and you're in a, you know, you have a huge wall that just calls for it. Absolutely, that 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 would be great to have a hundred inch, um, you know, TV or like a micro LED wall where it can be, you know, it could be two hundred inches, and there's a place for that, but not in a room that can be totally dark, and especially and something that Vern had said, it doesn't feel real. It in our generation, you know, you know, may, may, maybe the generations coming up. They can watch a movie in that because they're you know they're used to watching a movie on their iPhone, <laughs> but to be like you know we're used to a projector, we're used to a movie theater, and um, a projection a projection and the texture of the screen. It do if you want to watch an authentic movie, doesn't feel right on a TV if that's what you're going for. If that's the th you're trying to create a theater experience for people of a certain generation. 
you know, because it, it doesn't look right with it, maybe with the reflective. And when I say it doesn't look right, it just doesn't look authentic to a theater going experience that you're trying to create in a movie theater without all of the annoyance of that. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I, I just, I can't see that the, the, with the technology not being there yet with so many flaws that it still has. Um, I, I just, I'm not interested and I don't think I'll ever, I don't think technology will ever hit that with the price point that I'm willing to spend yeah. to, to do it. it. It's, it's a fun little theory so mm-hmm. that, but I, I don't think, and I, I have a mad VR with this. I have a 150 inch screen. I have a, NZ8 3100 JVC um this is th- th- this is great uh, my, now I do have so my TVs I have a an A80J or A90J it's a it's a Sony it's a Sony what is Probably it Probably A90 that was the that's I had that's a good TV Yeah it's a 70 it's a 75 inch OLED <clears throat> A90J yeah it's it's like a 2001 I'm just trying to remember and then I have then I have a, I'm sorry, that's my 65 inch. Then I have a 75 inch X80J. It's the LED version because I have that in my game room. And, you know, that's just, well, you know, you're shooting pool or whatever. And there's a lot of windows in there. So an LED works or LED, LED works better in there than an OLED. So that's my largest TV. So I do have some different versions. And then I have, a Samsung the frame down in my um, down in my living room, which is almost always just art. And then every once in a while, my daughter will want to watch something in there, and then you know, so she flips that on. So I have a I have a few different TVs. They're great for the use. It's just for this blacked out room. It calls for a projector to replicate why we like the 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 attributes of a commercial theater without the annoyances. Mm-hmm. So there's a there's a time and place for for TVs for sure. It's just the technology is not there to even slightly tempt me, especially with the price. Right. Yeah, yeah exactly at the price point too. Yeah. Yeah, I look forward to the day when I can debate and overanalyze this to death and <laughs> which one do I go with cuz I think I think they're both great. I would but I, you know, I think I would be happy if I had a 150 inch OLED in my theater, um, or my living room, or everywhere. <laughs> that would be yeah. <laughs> that would be amazing. What I'd really like personally, uh, because I'm worried about the the height of the screen relative to my sitting position, I would like one of those 21 by nine inch. Mm. I guess are yeah. the TVs are just panels. I don't know what they're called. Yeah, that would be that would be perfect for me. I was going to say, Doyle, um, so if you're doing a lot of gaming, mm-hmm. yeah, projectors aren't the greatest. Uh, right, especially the, the refresh rate, right? Yeah, well, On a projector, that, it's not as good. there are some projectors that will hit 120, but not any JVCs. You're talking some BenQs and stuff like that. Yes, 1080p. But, yeah, but um, it's really, so refresh rate, input lag is a big one. Projectors input lag are, are not not good, and and you can get OLEDs now with, uh, I don't know, like sub ten millisecond input lag times. So it's that's great the for VR being, VRR. Is that the spec? That, yeah, variable VR, refresh VR. rate. Yeah, that's like G Sync and then Free Sync for AMD. Mm-hmm. Um, so what I ended up doing that was another thing I did. <clears throat> I moved my HTPC to my desk and ran a long well i was debating i wanted to do it like linus tech tips does and you get like a uh, thunderbolt optical thunderbolt cable and then you have a um uh, what's it called keychron dock something like that but anyways mm-hmm. basically your pc can be remote uh, you can have it in a closet a server room and then have all your connections your video your audio all through one cable to your desk um problem with that is for the length i needed the cable alone was like 500 dollars. <laughs> oh my gosh and then the dock is like several hundred dollars i was just, man so i got a optical hdmi cable that supports um you know what the projector needs so 4k 60 hertz um mm. 
So I moved the computer to my desk, ran the cables uh, to the theater room. Um, reason I did that is because I do like to game. Uh, so I bought a 21 by 9 OLED computer monitor. Um, and it's been be really good decision. So for gaming, I can use that monitor. Um, the refresh rate's like sub one millisecond. Uh, does G Sync, Free Sync? Um, it's 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 just been a really good experience for gaming because the theater room was really cool, but man, it was just hard to game with that input lag. Mm. Interesting. Yeah, there's there's uh, you know that's one thing that's good about t technology now is that there's usually you can usually find a solution. It might be a little bit convoluted. You know, like you said, you had to move everything around. But yeah, for, for gaming, TVs are always probably going to be the best, uh, you know, for that. I hey, mean, John, maybe quick, they could get projectors there, but they're yeah. not Quick there question right for you, John. So you, you're talking about your center channel placement, but with your setup, you could have easily put it behind the screen. So what was the thought process behind that? I didn't want to sacrifice the length of my room. I have three rows. I wanted to be able to walk behind there. I didn't want it to be, uh, I didn't, I wanted space. Um, that's what it came down to. I didn't want to sacrifice and have a, um, a, f a fake wall, a faux wall, whatever. Oh, I see what you're saying. Um, but why so, would you need to with your if center it's in wall? Say so if it's in wall, couldn't you have just put it behind the screen? Okay, so yeah, there's a few things. One, okay, so I already have my tower Sopras. Um, I wasn't going to create some type. Those were I knew they were going to sit on the floor. I wasn't going to create something and put those up and behind the screen, especially mm -hmm. with Sopras. A lot of times you want to show them off because they're gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, even though I have velvet over them to keep it black, I, they're they're a piano white glossy. So sometimes I do take them off and you don't want to hide those behind a screen. So I knew I was going to have those on the floor. So I would be building a false wall because I, I, it still have to be out a little bit, right? It couldn't be against it. I mean, I guess it could even with the, the woven type of acoustically transparent screens. Um, I would be doing all of that for just for the center speaker. Um, and you do I get into a debate here. <laughs> you can't you 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 do lose a little bit of sharpness and brightness with an acoustically transparent screen, even woven or perforated. A little bit. There is a little bit of a difference. And so it wasn't that big. I, I wanted to make sure I had um I wanted to have optimum visual and i knew it was going to be a just a slight sacrifice to have the the speaker the center speaker below um so i i, I went with something that how could i say this i i think i would perceive the clarity how many you know what i'm trying to say i think i i think visually i would notice it more if I had gone acoustically transparent, then auto, auditorily having the speaker a little bit lower. So yeah. you like you feel like you get a better image quality. Yeah. Much better return on image quality by having a smoother screen versus having maybe, you know, slightly worse quality by moving your center ASG. section down. Well right. perf screen perf screens uh, or woven screens also don't normally come in reasonably high gain numbers. They tend to lose some light. They're like mm. in the point nines, point eights, and right. and, um, mine's a, and mine's a one three. Yeah, and um, the other thing for those of you who have seen and attended get-togethers in my home theaters, um, you know, all three speakers are below the screen. Now there are a pair of height speakers above the screen. And the Denon receiver does support the ability to use that. And as a matter of fact, um, I think 15 years ago or better, um, that 
other brands had the ability to use height speakers to raise the sound field. So that's another option if you're into um, a solid screen, but you want the perceived audio image to come from more or less mid screen rather than below the screen. But you guys were here. Did you notice that there was a an issue with, uh, you know, where the audio was coming from? I, I don't feel it was disconnected remember. at all. I don't remember that. Or maybe experiencing that. I don't remember it being a problem, but I do feel like on your screen, I am like looking up more than yeah, I am. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, the, like, the first row is like really close. Yeah, the first row is like eight and a half feet. However, the seats do recline. So mm -hmm. yeah. if you take advantage of the recline, it puts you on a more more normal viewing angle, but yeah, it's not optimal. But in my case with the curved screen and the anamorphic lens, the goal was to try and uh, put the projector in the center of the screen vertically um, height wise so that I didn't have to use a lens shift to uh, move the image. So that's the reason why, I mean, it is a nine foot tall room. There's still a foot and a half above the screen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but those are the, the trade-offs that we all make. To... Right. Hey, John, when you said something about your, your speaker covers, I just couldn't help but think that I understand your logic, but I, I can't help but feel bad for your beautiful speakers. And then you just put a bag over their head <laughs> and <Totally>. say, <laughs> yep. I know yep. you're beautiful, but I'm putting a bag over your head. And cause you can tell brown bag I special. Mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, think about it. I have these white, uh, these, the visually for, for those that, that might not know, I have these two tower uh, piano white glossy Sopras sitting right next to my 1.3 gain screen. <laughs> you can tell it washes out. The corners are like you can like it's it's I don't want to say it's bad, but it's absolutely apparent. So I have black velvet covers <laughs> that go over them and then when i want to take them off I, I do if i want to highlight it depending on who's coming over and they want to see my room but then very if, they're, if we're watching a movie very quickly those um slip covers go over them and they, you know i put holes in them because they were they're dust covers they're velvet dust covers that i made into um yeah speaker covers to and they work very very well because it's apparent very apparent well, when uh when the projection is on and it, it washes out half my screen. It's, it's gross looking. John, am I showing the right is Sopra number two? Yeah, they're the twos. Yeah. Not the three. So yeah, those look like them. I would say those are. So for me, those look like stormtroopers. You have yeah. a black neck with this white gloss. I mean, that's why I got, I mean, they sound amazing. And then they look like two stormtroop sentinels, you know, on either side of my, uh, my screen hindsight i i mean i love them but i might not have done those hindsight because i bought those before i even really knew how my theater was going to be mm. because they're not very home theater friendly because they're white and you know they're they're, they're audiophile speakers wow. they work very yeah. very well Two because channel. every other speaker in my room still has that one inch beryllium tweeter so total quality is perfect and everything transitions very well uh, so they're all they all fit really well using the Focal 1000 in walls, but they're just not. I wouldn't say you wouldn't go out of your way to buy those for your home theater. It's just I kind of started with that and then mm -hmm. had to kind of get creative with everything else around them. So I so. think we've just identified your next upgrade. You'll move <laughs> these to the two channel room, wherever that's right. going to be. Yeah, that's funny. And I don't know, because what would I then what would I do? OK, if I did that, right, if I if I said, OK, let's do something different because everything else in here is full Kyle 1000s, I would have to go to a to I would have to do Focal 1000 Utopia on wall or in wall. So and those are those really long ones that you can chain subwoofers off of. Um, yeah, you're all looking at towers there. If you. Bring up the now. When you say utopia, people could be thinking of the tower utopias. I don't mean those. R real I mean quick, the utopia so, one thousand in walls. Sorry to interrupt you, Doyle. Yeah, he's yeah, he's got to leave. Do. So, Doyle, appreciate you. Appreciate you fun. stopping by, man. Yeah. Thanks, man. 
It's Good been to meet fun. You. Thanks. Good chatting with you. Have All, right. Good to you. All right. Talk to you later. All right. Let me go back to. Oops. Yeah. If you see. find them, if you look up the one, the Utopia 1000 in walls and they're very, uh, and that, that that's used for an LCR. <clears throat> so if I was to get rid of my towers, which would be really weird, I would have to go to something really beefy because these towers are powerful. Um, so I would, I would definitely go to the in wall, which can be on wall also utopias. And then I'd have to toenail them in a little bit. So I'd have to do some, uh, a little bit of construction. You still looking for them? Yeah, I don't. Uh, you might just have under... If you just Google. I mean, I see Utopia, oh, but yeah. it's like these Utopia yeah, not those. 3 yeah, Evo. Not the, not, yeah, they're, they're an in-wall. They're probably in a different category there, but because well, I, I don't even see the in-walls in that. But if you put in Utopia in-wall LCR 1000s, you'll see them. And they're they're huge, and you can you can attach subwoofers. There you go. There we go. Mm. Yeah, so those th those can be in a box, or they can be. I mean, they, they have their own backer box, right? All of all of these Focal One Thousands are in their own backer box, and then so you can, but you so those can be on wall or in wall, and uh, it's huge, right? That's without the subwoofers that you can attach to them. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. But I would need something as beefy as that to match the power of my <clears throat> of my two tower sopras so you know and then i'd kind of be nervous i'd have i'd have to have those in here and hear the difference mm -hmm. maybe i wouldn't hear the difference but i don't know those yeah, and there's no it, way to be, do that be hard to, <laughs> it'd be hard to beat the the sopras so it, it might be equivalent but maybe not Beefy says, I'm so rich, I just hire the actors to, pour, to perform in my living room. That's funny. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to go through some of these comments that I have start here. So uh, Rob, going back to Kscape, he says, my challenge with, Case, Case, with Kscape is I question their long-term viability as a company given they are a really niche player. Lots of other options available, not at the same quality, but maybe good enough. I don't think, I don't think Kscape is going anywhere. Uh, and I know everybody goes back to, because I remember when it happened, everybody goes back to when they went bankrupt for however long, I guess it wasn't very long, when they were just, you know, discs. Um, but, was it bankrupt or they just got in trouble with all of the studios? I, I remember, so that may, have been, I, that may have been a thing. I specifically remember seeing an article where the terminology, the word bankrupt was, was involved. Now, I don't know if it was one of those cases where it was like, you file for chapter whatever it is bankrupt, but it's you're not really bankrupt. I don't know what the what the deal was because I remember, I remember looking into K Skip and I was like, oh wow, this is really expensive because they had the disc player. Like you put the disc in, they didn't have the the players and everything was digital. And then I remember seeing that they went bankrupt and I was like, oh snap, that's not good. And then not long after that, they came back and I was like, I didn't, I didn't know that you could come back from that. So. Um, clearly they, you know, they were able to work out a deal with, with the studios, but yeah, I think that was an issue too. So maybe it, it was a, a all encompassing thing where it was, I don't know if the, if that was something like where legally the, the corporations forced them out of it. I don't know, but, um, well, I, it doesn't like seem saying like they went bankrupt from <clears throat> audio and that, really? yeah. The, when they were when they and that's back way before I have any. I got shafted the first time when they were bankrupt with audio. So yeah, I only so he remember. He has a bad taste in his mouth, and I so I okay. can understand that. Like I can be. He's, that's he would totally be very gun shy if he has a device that's a brick now. I, okay, yeah, that that's a bad taste for sure. Yeah. yeah. He says that was twenty five years ago. Wow. Okay, so wow. that was that was even before. I, uh, yeah, that may have been so. I don't know when I'm about to be 40 that no, I wasn't 15 then. So yeah, that was before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had to do a little I'm, I'm reading an article from like 2016. That sounds like a lot more. It looks like they, uh, they were shut down for a few days. I can't tell exactly. Right, Cause they were ripping enough. the discs. Right. So I, I get right. it. I mean, they were ripping your own property, but you're, they were ripping the discs and the studios okay. didn't like that. And, but then they, they said, Hey, we want to do it the right way. Meet, meet us like let's do this the right way what do you want what do you want from us and yeah. i mean 
I don't think I don't think they're going anywhere. It is niche. I don't think they're going anywhere. It is uh it's it's expensive and I get their business model. I think if they made it a lot cheaper, which I don't think they could financially do because they they have to pay employees. They have to pay you have to pay people to watch all these movies, do all of the metadata, do all of the coding. Encryption it, is big too. All of the stuff, right? So let, let's just say they made everything 50% cheaper, okay? They would get an in, so they would make it, uh, they probably would make it up in volume, but what would happen to customer service? I, I think they, I think it would be detrimental to them because they would have this, let's say more or less the same volume money, the same, the same money, but the amount of people would have tripled, quadrupled, and they probably couldn't, you know, just their customer service. And their tech support, I think, I think it would be detrimental to them. Yeah, you got to make a cutback. So I think, I think it would be very, I think that, I think that it would just, it could be dangerous for them. And that's why they don't want to go into the market of, you know, making it available to almost everyone because they, they'd be too big to handle it with their level of employees that they have right now. That's just my guess. Yeah, it, I'm doing a little reading. It looks like they are uh, officially closed for about a month. Um, but during that, they were still taking orders while they got new equity funding. And they ended up doing a downsize from 81 to 32 people. And this was back in 20. Oh, wow. So they were really small still. Actually, even then. this says 2019, no, updated 2019. So I'm not sure when the original 2016. 20, 2016, I think it was, I want to say it was even before then when I, but, but that maybe that's, that's about right. I just remember, I remember reading an article and I was like, oh, snap. They, you know, I was like, well, I guess they're gone. But they, I mean, they came back and they've, they've been, They've been solid ever since. Uh, let's see here. Rob says, the only way I would go back to t a TV is if they bring out a scope screen format. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't I don't know if, if there's any. I think that kind of goes back to consumer demand. Like how many people actually want that for the yeah. manufacturers to start mass producing that, you know? Personally, whenever I'm watching on an uh, OLED, I don't even notice black bars because they're so black. Like it doesn't bother me because they're not gray bars. But I do get the as far as being able to fit really large format TVs inside a room, it could be nice to have that widescreen format. And yeah. I know that with the panel TVs, I forget what the correct name is, but where they're, they're modular panels that you install video screen wall. Yeah, screen walls. Yeah, that you can do any format you want. Yeah. Now those are cool. I saw that at Cedia last year. Uh, just just video walls actually, and it's that's the best ones that I've seen. And I didn't I didn't see seams or anything, but you can basically customize it. Like you said, you can have a sixteen by nine screen, and then right next to that you can have a scope screen, and then you can have like multiple like almost kind of like picture in picture, but like like large screens the size, the size of like a 65 inch it's it's crazy what they can do with those but then mm -hmm. i mean you're talking now you're talking like you have to have a dealer you have to have an installer like you can't it's not just like let me just take this out of the box mm -hmm. and put this hang this on my tv so you've got the cost of that you've got to configure it and then it comes with its own like uh like computer to to, to do all of the masking or not masking but to however, you know, aspect ratios you want to do. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a whole turnkey system. So now you're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars, much more than, you know, a TV or a regular TV, but it is cool. Like it's, I think it's definitely the future, but I don't think it's mainstream. Yeah. It'd future. be a little harder to take with you if you move to. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Cause then that, that now you have to like take it down and everything. So, but it's, it's, it's cool technology. Let's see. Evangelist says two months ago I got the Hisense 100 inch for two thousand dollars, replacing my one, replacing my 100 inch Hisense Ultra Short Throw. I do not regret the change. And last Black Friday I got the TCL 98 inch for the Lemon No Regrets. Man, he's rocking with those those 100 inch setups. So yeah, a, a Hisense 
100 inch TV with smoke with ultra short throw. Ultra short, uh, you know, 100 inch. So congrats on that, man. Rob says, I have 12 TVs in my home. Jeez, 12? <laughs> I've got three. <laughs> no, yeah, I've got three. My only regret is my OLED. If I had to do it over, I would have saved the money and bought the LED instead. Interesting. Why is that, Rob? It's a little bit brighter. Yeah. I don't think I've ever heard that, though. I don't think I've ever heard anyone say that. They, they I think back the, OLEDs, the OLEDs tend to have burn-in issues if you're not very mm, careful. That's too. right. I forgot about that. Beefy says, Matt Pose just did a video about this, talking about what we were talking about earlier. Bouncing center channel off of the screen is doable, but ridiculously complicated to do right. Yeah, so I can't imagine how long that takes, trial and error. Because, I mean, everybody, everybody's room is different, so it's not just like, a, oh, yeah, we'll just put this here. You've got room, and then not everybody, not everybody does a room acoustics. <laughs> so you, you, know, you, I'm sure you've. There's so many factors that go into making that to where it works perfect. Because you don't want it to work almost just work, just work just right. Mm -hmm. You want it to work perfect to where it's seamless. You don't. It doesn't sound like it's being bounced off coming from somewhere. And then, so I can't imagine how expensive that is either. Because I think I watched that video. He talked about like. It's ridiculously complicated and it's ridiculously expensive. No, he said his I, OLED's in a room with twelve windows, so that makes sense. Yeah, oh LED God. would be better. In okay, there, yeah, that makes sense for sure. So, hey, we, can you? What is it? He he's bouncing the center channel off the screen. How, it, where is the center channel at? I'm. I'm I think it's so. I think it's below. So I, I know Shane Lee did a video when he went to Germany where they had something kind of like that. There's a so you have like your screen here the center channel is aimed up towards the towards the I guess the LED display and then it bounces back and I think they have one on top and bottom. It's kinda it's kinda weird. I'm not really sure how the technology works. Hmm. But um it That's sounds like those bounce most speakers, bouncy outmost speakers. <laughs> I think, is it kind of the same <laughs> concept? No, it's 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 different. Like there's wave it's all kind of if you go watch Shane Lee's video, they talk about it. Um and apparently, like Shane Lee said, that it was, it was pretty good, but it's it's not the same as um, having like a dedicated center channel, like either behind the screen or you know at at ear level. But he's, it's, apparently, it sounded pretty good. But it's like way, way, way more advanced, um, and the speaker is like huge. Michael uh, Stevens, I would. What's wonder, up, youth man? I would wonder if it would make it like where you have a pretty um, narrow sweet spot trying to do all the bounce stuff. Like, would you end up with a, like there's only one good seat or does that not matter if you get it set up right? So in that video also, cause I think it was a Skindo that was doing a that. Sendo. Yeah. Sendo, Skindo. They had also had, I think speakers like along the front row. So it was, it was like the main center speaker and then there was other speakers. Cause I think, I think they talk about uh, off axis, you know, viewing for that with the audio, but yeah, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it sounds like it's a very complicated process that you would have to do a lot of pre-planning and make sure that your room is like, I don't think we could just be like a, a standard cookie cutter house. You would just put that in there. You'd probably be doing like a custom house. You'd probably get with the, with the builder and say like, or with the engineer and say, okay, this is what you need. This is the type of room that you need to have. This is the type of placement. This is so. I mean, that's, I'm sure it's like a whole, a or, whole thing. Or, or you could just put it right underneath your TV and be fine. <laughs> You'll be fine. It's gonna sound no, great. It's, it's garbage. It's we good. can't can't even imagine treat, that. Treat your room. Treat your room with some acoustical panels. It'll be beautiful. Don't be scared. All right. If y'all could just hold on for nine minutes, I'm gonna watch this video so I can comment <laughs> on the discussion okay. more appropriate. I got more comments yeah. anyway. <laughs> it, it's uh, also going to take a lot of digital audio processing to make that yeah, work. Yeah, they said Delaying, that too. Yeah. You're going to have to delay the outside channels um, because your distances are obviously going to be off because you're yeah. adding speaker to screen to, yeah, to viewer. Yeah, so totally. there's there's a tremendous the amount. Be a... Of, not worth it. Put the speakers under the screen if you don't have any place else to put them. <laughs> yeah, and I think they have to do like some matrixing of the other channels to like make it mm -hmm. blend in and all yeah, kinds of... Yeah, uh, it's uh, <clears throat> going to be a ugly solution. 
I mean, commercial theaters have been trying to make this work for a couple of years now. And uh, I haven't heard of any really great, you know, responses from people who say this sounds wonderful. Yeah. Or read any in the forums that the theater owners. Your, your average consumer is not going to do that. I, I don't see the need unless you've got like a, if you've got like a theater size, like a legit theater size space where you, and you would only do that if you had like, you know, an LED wall or something like that. Let's see, Michael Slocum Sr. And by the way, thanks for tuning in, youth man. Michael Slocum Jr. says, so I mentioned this before. I have left front, left center, right center, right front, all four speakers, PSA, MTM, 212s are powered powered by a monolith 8D250X Class D amp. The sound is better than top and bottom center configuration. And he says, I'm in a modern loft condo with a giant 15 by 15 wall of floor to ceiling windows. My Epson sixty forty does a trick. I'll have to watch. After, I have to watch after the sun goes down. Man, those are some big windows. Yeah, I mean it's it's. You run into different issues with with projectors. So, like you said, it's got to be light control. Any type of light that comes in, it's gonna. Um. Sure. Let me see. <clears throat> Uh, let's see comments. Uh, Rob Zilinka says, I saw a thought provoking post on AVS is home theater a dying hobby. I'd say not with this group. Definitely not with me. I mean, I <laughs> nah, use my I theater. I think it's getting bigger because, yeah. because the price point's coming down. I think, I, I think we're hitting our heyday. I, you know, and you know, whether they have a media room or they have a dedicated home theater, I think, I think with the price point and the and the internet with education and you know with youth man and hatery cowboy and just other YouTubes that can educate you with how to do it correctly, I don't think it's dying at all. In fact, commercial theaters are kind of dying. I mean, oh yeah, I watched some great you know. You know, whether it be, and I know we're gonna, supposed to be talking about Dune 2. I don't know if we're going to get to it or not. But, uh, you know, if I, I've watched some very big cinematic movies recently in a commercial theater. I was almost by myself. And it was within the first week of opening. Same. So, as, so I say that to say that I think home theaters, more people are staying at home and want to recreate some of that with larger formats and better audio, better video. And so I, I think it's parent. I, I think, and, and with prices coming down and companies like SBS that have very great systems at a reasonable price, I don't think it's dying. I think it's on the rise. Yep. I agree with you because I went to see, I saw Dune twice in the theaters and I saw Godzilla versus Kong twice. I went, the last time I went was on Monday but I went to I went to Dune opening weekend on Saturday, so like prime time, seven o'clock, and that theater was an IMAX theater. There was ten people in the theater, including myself and my friends, and then there was like a couple other people. I was like, man, this is kind of like I knew I knew it was on the decline, but this is opening weekend yeah. on Saturday, and then I went on Monday, which Monday I understand because it's Monday evening, but there mm -hmm. was maybe like. 10 people um but yeah it's it's kind of depressing and i'm i'm trying to do my sad, part but i don't i don't know why i feel sad because right. i have this right but <laughs> I, I but i'm still sad like it's a shame so john do you know, still you go to the why, theater you know what's that do you still go to the theater well, well for like dune 2 i did because i didn't right. want to wait yeah okay. same um so yeah sometimes i didn't see godzilla the new one godzilla x kong godzilla x whatever kong. Well, I, I, you know, because I that one I can wait for. Um, so, but I think this is why I'm sad because I know most people would just rather sit at home on their iPad or laptop and watch the same movie, stream it, you know, two months from now when it comes out on streaming. I think that's why I'm sad because, you know, they're not experiencing it like the director and everyone is intention. But it's just sad to see this huge, you know, these million dollar systems and it's just an empty room it's yeah too bad. Uh, yeah just a couple of weeks ago i think it was 
Alamo Draft House announced bankruptcy. Wow. No. That's where the I go. Entire chain. The entire Dang. chain. I go. That's where that's my chosen wow. theater is Alamo Draft House because I love their business model. Oh my mm-hmm. goodness. That's wow. crazy. Yeah, I mean and and that's a shame. Along the lines of them not being there, the experience just isn't like I was telling. I told a couple of people when I went to see, specifically in the IMAX theater that I've gone to because it was close. But I saw Dune and Godzilla X Kong, and I'm like, "Where's the base at?" And then when I saw Dune, like for some reason the whole movie, the right, the right back channel, was like had to have been like 10, 15, 20 dBs hotter than everything else. Cause I'm like, why am I hearing this? And I asked mm. my friend, I'm like, does that sound higher? And he was like, yeah. So it's either they're not putting in the effort to calibrate the system per movie or what, but it's just not the, it's just not the same experience. So, I my, mean, I my agree. My closest AMC, I refuse to go there. Last thing I watched there was Spider-Man uh, across the Spider-Verse, the newest one. It was so bad. I demanded my money back. <laughs> now I know they had some audio issues and that's a whole nother story, but, and then, but I'd seen a movie, a few movies before that. Yeah. The audio is just appalling at some of these no yeah, base. It's offensive. Now, but Alamo draft house was great for Dune. It was amazing. Cause I think they care a little bit much. So I'm sorry to hear that they might not be around unless they have yeah, a, a trick up their sleeve. Yeah, I don't some know. Some of them do a good job. I don't know exactly what they're doing. I think it was, I don't even remember what chapter it was, but I do subscribe <clears throat> to one of the movie theater uh, forums. And you regularly see probably every week they have a post on, you know, what theaters near you have recently closed. Hmm. And every week there are theaters showing up in that list. And uh, But I can guarantee you that none of these theaters in today's world probably see a technician maybe more than once a year i and believe so it if something happens to a channel to a speaker to balance the people who run it aren't going to notice it the people who go and complain aren't going to get any satisfaction and you know that's just the way it is in today's world i mean once they went to digital there's just no, you know, there's no reason to have anybody there who really cares. You need somebody to push the button to start the show, and that's the last thing that you need any kind of support for or attention to. Um, yeah. it's I, I, I recently signed up for the Regal, like their little Regal Unlimited thing. Mm-hmm. And just because I'm trying to support them a little bit more and also like try to do like a little bit more content on, on the channel. But it's a really good deal. But it's like since I've been I mean, I've been to f- four movies like in the past month. I mean, two movies, but I've been four times. And it's just it's it's really depressing because I'm like, man, has it really gotten this bad? I mean, there's like 10 people in the whole t- like, yeah, there's no way for them to continue to make money if and that's just my theater like. I don't know how they are across the country, and I know, I know that, uh, I know that COVID really helped with home theaters, like by a lot. So, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I I much prefer to watch movies in my theater, but same, you know, like like John was saying for like Doom, like I don't want to wait. I want to see that the way it's supposed to be seen because there's. It's just not the same experience, even though we have these, you know, large home theaters and stuff. So I was glad that I was able to see it. <clears throat> and, and Oppenheimer. I, we, I saw that with mm. Rusty, and we saw that in the... 70 the millimeter? 70, mm-hmm. I'm sorry? 70 millimeter? Right. So we, we saw the actual film version because I wanted to experience that because it's been a long time since I'd seen a film. So, th- so that was fun. So there are times and places that I'll go for sure. Dolby Cinemas, someone just commented... Dolby Cinemas, that's where I saw Top Gun Maverick because I wasn't mm. going to wait. And that was at a Dolby Cinema with, the, um, I don't know, the, some sort of butt kickers in the seat. Uh, I don't know exactly what they're using. But that was awesome. The Dolby Cinema that I went to was great. I so there are ones that care. But on the average, commercial theaters, they just don't care and they don't they yeah. fall out of calibration and they don't get maintained well enough. 
John, the last movie I saw in a commercial cinema was Oppenheimer with you. Okay. And that was neat just because of the whole 70 millimeter film and that right. aspect. And it did really look interesting. It was, it was different and it was better. Um, now I also remember that the audio in that theater wasn't all that great. So well, yeah, I mean the like, bass the bass sounded good, but it was way loud. Like it yeah. was kind of harsh sounding. And so I still, you know, I'm I prefer the comforts of my creature comforts uh, at home and I can wait for releases. So I hope y'all don't ruin Dune Two whenever we get to that. <laughs> but well, maybe um, maybe we won't expound on it. I just I just wanted to see if if anybody had seen it and what they thought about it because it's i i the saw scale it. is amazing and yes and i am nervous to play it in my theater like <laughs> i know it can handle it <laughs> i know it can handle it but i might need to do some drywall repair <laughs> yeah it's crazy if i'm playing that at reference because a few scenes are like oh my gosh this is going to sound insane in my theater mm, yeah it's it's so, gonna yeah. i think it's gonna be one of the top demos but i agree with youth man like i i like imax the imax that's close by my house i've been twice in the last couple of weeks and the there's like zero base but the other imax that we have in houston that's off of in, in i-10 and silver there's times where i'm like this is borderline too loud like this is hurting my ears i think i remember the first time i went there was for batman uh the dark knight the Dark Knight, uh, yeah, The Dark Knight, the second one, and the opening scene with the shotgun, and I was like, "Oh my God, this is mm. <laughs> this is too loud." So sometimes I think there's there's an imbalance there where they just I, I don't know if they just don't know how to calibrate it or or somebody's not properly calibrating it or what, but yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, did anybody else see Dune? Uh, Rusty B, did you see? I haven't seen it yet. Okay. Okay, so. Um. Yeah, then we we won't spoil it for anybody that, that hasn't seen it yet. But it's it's pretty cool. It's so great. I, <laughs> I think the only other topic left is M Wave. Woo! Yes. So I know That's Rusty. My yep. I know. I know Rusty is been doing some stuff. So we're gonna let him tell a little bit about what he's been doing. Um. Yeah, so, says, Don't judge me. I still need to do the first. <laughs> yeah, because you, you've 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 got a big role this year. Yeah. Um, so what I'm doing is just to uh, to help the man, and I he he didn't wasn't planning to join us tonight, and I said, well, if you would just five minutes, just give me five <laughs> minutes to come on, and we want to hear it straight from the man. Tell us what's going on with M Wave. He's like, no, 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 I'm not going to crash your party. I just wanted to come uh, he's say never hi crashing, and man. show some love. I was like, no, 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 just, just real quick. And so he reluctantly agreed to to oh, grace shit. us with his presence. So uh, uh, hey, just get do you want all of the rest of us? Just wipe us off the screen. <laughs> exactly. Put Michael on. No, for sure not. Yeah, we have. We I think we have. I wasn't sure if we could share it or not, but Michael called me today and said we got a few new people on board. Did you? Mm -hmm. Are you ready to announce those yeah. yet? Um, well, I know one we can, the other one we can't just because they're still finalizing like who they're wanting to bring into their group, but the one, absolutely. All right. Let her rip. So we just got a new, um, I want to say brand. It's basically a home theater company called Kincaid Home Theaters. So they are in Kansas City, so they're local to nice. the show, which is pretty cool. Um, they've got, what is it? Epson. They have actually it'd be easier for me just to look it up. Let me pull it up real quick. So I don't miss any of them. They have, they're going to be bringing Epson, SVS, Focal, Elon, Marantz, Klipsch, Stewart, Integra, Panamax. So I'm excited about that because, um, that's some really affordable brands. You know, the reality is we have people coming to the show in all different stages of their home theater journey. Some are just getting into this hobby and they're looking for answers. They're looking for, you know, what are they don't know what they're looking for. They just come into the show to get an experience with different brands to see 
the sound signature that they like, or maybe they're considering, you know, going to a projection. I remember one of my patrons, he said that he came to the show this past year in 2023 and he had a TV and he had been thinking about maybe going projection, but he said once he went to the projector comparison and he began to go to the different experience rooms, the full Dolby Atmos experience room with the big screen projector, he's like, I'm sold like immediately. And so he, I think he even bought a projector at the show and went home and um, started re kind of designing his room, which was pretty cool. And so everybody's on a different, you know, part of their journey. And of course we have all different types of budgets. And so at the show, we've got pretty high end. We've got a Sendo, we've got um, Christie projectors going to be there this year, which is super cool. Um, even if you and I can't afford Christie, it's still a cool experience. I've got a friend of mine that, you know, brought over his Ferrari one day. I probably will never own a Ferrari, but I'm telling you, it's a lot of fun to be, you know, to have that experience. And that's part of what we want to do at M wave is just provide you with some really cool experiences that you're just not going to get anywhere else. So really excited about them coming on. Um, We've had quite a few over probably the past month that have been added to the show. We had Cinemike, um, who else? Ascendo, uh, who were some new ones here? I'm just looking through the list. And, and Michael, the, that, what is it? Kin, Kincaid, what is the name of the brand? Kincaid. So Kincaid. If, you go to, if you go to the website, um, MidwestAVExperience.com and go to brands, and then we've got all the brands that are that are listed there. And so it's Kincaid, K-I-N-K-A-D-E, Home Theater. So are they going to have all those speakers in the same room or are they going to have multiple rooms? So it's one room. So I and again, I haven't really spoken or I've spoken with him, the owner of the company, but I don't know what he's bringing. This is just what he filled out on the form. Um, so when an exhibitor says, hey, we want to come to the show, they fill out a form. And I'm asking them things like, you know, give I'm me. I'm gonna let you share because I can't find it. Oh, that's okay. Um, oh, here. Oh, there you go. Um, so when they provide, you know, the information to us, we're asking for things like um, their logo, maybe like a brief uh, paragraph about their business or about their brand, um, and then give me some photos. So I actually snag some photos just off their website to use. Um, so I haven't added them as the room yet, but if you scroll down, you'll see the list of brands. There you go. So we've got about two or three rooms left that we can potentially put them in. And there so we're we just go. deciding where would be the best place. But my, my guess, and it's just a guess is they may not have like a full Dolby Atmos system, like, uh, Ascendo is going to have like SVS will have. Um, who else? JTR is going to have one. Am I missing one, Rusty? I think there's one more. The a full. Yeah. Um, one more. Was uh, Seymour? They. Um... So that's. I oh, mean, that I'm was thinking, with RTJ. Oh, RBH. RBH is doing one. Yep. So yeah, so we've got four full Dolby Atmos systems. Martin Logan. I kind of think they're going to do that same thing. Um, we just haven't gotten confirmation on that. They're doing that at Axpona. So I believe that they'll end up doing it at M-Wave as well. But but my guess is their room with Kincaid, they may just have like just a, a bunch of different things set up. Um, but I can, I, I'll be happy to reach out to him to see what his plans are. Because really the more information they tell me, the more I can share with my audience and, you know, and kind of help them promote. Sounds good, man. Yeah, and we've we've already got some um, being uh, got some good responses on some of the seminars. I think we're going to have some really cool seminars this year, and there's some yeah. that we're still nailing down and nailing down the schedule. But we'll definitely have a list of seminars and a seminar mm -hmm. schedule posted yeah. way in advance, so everybody can plan your visit and make sure you don't miss anything this um, at M Wave Twenty Four. Um, I don't think we're, we're ready to announce all those yet, but that will I be mean, coming up some soon. Of, some of them we're going to be talking. I mean, I don't mind sharing, you know, what they're kind of 
some of them are going to be doing calibration type stuff. Um, some are which I'm excited about, to hear. Yeah, some of them are going to be talking about the new RP twenty two or twenty two guidelines. Yeah. That's cool. So, and we actually have two groups that are interested in talking about that. And one of the emails today was like, Hey, we kind of already have somebody talking about the RP 22. And then the guy responded, he's like, you know, that's like 107 pages. There's mm -hmm. a lot of content. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty thick. More than likely we can make sure that we're not, you know, overlapping. And so the idea this year is to be very intentional um, be very structured because that was some of the feedback that we received last year is, you know, we really would love to know a schedule and, and you know, we're learning as we go because nobody else is doing what we're trying to accomplish. And so the idea is, you know, I gave Rusty the, um, the brands that have said express interest in doing a seminar. And so he's reaching out to them. He'll be coordinating that, putting together a schedule. So like you said, we'll have that well in advance so that you can kind of plan your days at M-Wave um, when you're going to go to what seminar. There may be a seminar you're just not really interested in, and that's totally mm -hmm. cool. We want this weekend to be for you and to meet your needs. If you're there just to build relationships, there's going to be plenty of opportunities to do that. If your desire is to hear that, you know, the one brand that you don't have an opportunity to hear, you know, maybe it's RBH, maybe it's SVS, maybe it's, you know, SVS is going to be bringing their new speakers, which I'm nice. excited about mm -hmm. that. Same. You know, they've got a lot of hype over that. A lot of people are excited. I think they had it at what CES not too long ago. Got a lot of good feedback for that. So, um, so we're going to have that as a full Dolby Atmos setup. I'm super pumped about that. Um, like I said, I mean, we're just, we're trying to, we just want to have some fun. We want mm -hmm. to create an event that people come to and they leave and go, can I just go ahead and sign up for next year? Mm -hmm. Because this was awesome, you know, and that's exactly really what to do. Yeah. And I, I want to say, I asked Jordan, you know, he's a, uh, he has an affiliate link because he's, mm -hmm. he's sending people, sending his audience to M wave yeah. because he went, he enjoyed it and he's, he's already give, made several videos about it, but yeah. He's like, no, I'm coming back and, and you're coming with me. So he's, he's bringing his audience along with him. Um, so I said, make sure you flash that up on your 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 banner because we want you to get credit for those yeah, referrals. For sure. And and um, and yes, he does get a, a small commission, but it's because he earned it. And yeah. one of the best thing. Be, oh, sorry. I was just saying we we just thought that would be a really tangible way to thank those that are mm -hmm. willing to share in wave with their audience, you yeah. know, um, cause one I, don't of the, know about, I don't know about Jordan, but I'm not, I'm not getting rich off of a uh, AdSense. Are you Jordan? <laughs> you know what I mean? and, and that's the thing about YouTube is that it wildly <laughs> fluctuates. I mean, yeah. you can't control, you can't say I'm going to make a video and this video is going to get 50,000 views. You have zero control over that. And it might be personally the best video that you've ever created. Sure. But if you're if, if you don't have the right thumbnail, if you don't have the right title and people don't click on it, then the, the algorithm says, hey, people don't like this video as much as your other ones. I'm not going to push it out. So it's just it's it's kind of it's kind of like a, a, a crack shot. You know, some videos we've talked about this before. We put all this effort days, weeks, you know, you you do all this nice B-roll and everything and it may get three or 4,000 views, but then you go turn on the camera and just, you know, sh talk from the hip and it gets 20,000 views and you're like, what the heck? What? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I appreciate you, you know, you guys doing that. Um, yeah, I'm learning all the, the behind the scenes about the, the YouTube life. And, <laughs> and one day, uh, Michael's like sending me a screenshot and he's like, Oh, this video is not doing as good as I had hoped. I'm changing the screenshot or the thumbnail and the description. Yep. I, I'm like, <laughs> I said, bro, it's been like 30 minutes. He's like, I know it's been 30 minutes already. It makes a big and I difference. Like, it's YouTube, weird. YouTube gives you immediate feedback. So within the first, I think it's about 45 minutes after a, a <clears> video is posted, it'll rank it. It'll compare it to your most recent 10 videos. 10 out of 10 is bad. 
<laughs> yes, exactly. That's terrible. <laughs> so this is what I do. If the video is six, seven, eight, nine, or 10, I just change the thumbnail and title because that tells me people might be seeing the video, but they're I'm just scrolling it. past it. It didn't grab their attention. And yep. so you never want to make a clickbait title or clickbait thumbnail, but you absolutely have to create clickable titles and thumbnails. And that's just the reality yeah. of it. So that's why people, if you don't catch people's attention, they're not going to watch no matter how many hours Jordan spent crafting this video or how many hours Ike has spent, you know, doing this awesome B roll and, and just has this great production value. If nobody ever clicks on it, it doesn't really matter. So the reality is we have to kind of cater to that, at least get their attention. And then it's up to us to continue to like to keep them watching the video, whether it's being entertained or being educational or informative or whatever. Yeah. Okay. You got to, <clears throat> and I've, I mean, I've, you, you see the big name people do. It. I've seen MKB HD do it. I've seen Gerald undone do it where I'm like, Oh, I just watched this video, but there's a different thumb. Oh, his video must not be doing that good. And then you look at his views, what he normally gets. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't see his data, but you can look at his views and then you see like, oh, the last he posted his four hours and it's only got 5,000. Yeah, that's super low for him. So right. it's 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 wildly inaccurate for uh, on, on YouTube. It's just, you have once you hit upload, you have no control of how that video does. Just let it rip, man. Yeah, just hopefully you, you yeah. have good content. Because like you said, once the person clicks on it, mm -hmm. now it's what is it? The first 30 seconds. If mm -hmm. you can if you can keep people past the third past mm -hmm. the first 30 seconds, then the YouTube algorithm says, oh, okay, people are liking to watch this. Mm -hmm. Or if they're watching a little bit longer, then they push it out to more people. So yep. it's, it's, uh, uh, it's, it could be frustrating at times. Like you, like Michael <laughs> said, when you spend, you put all your effort into this video <laughs> and yeah. you might think it's, this is my best work yet, but then it's a banger. <laughs> yeah. it's like it bombs. So, but like you said, sometimes you can go in the, I can go in the theater room and just share from my heart. Don't put any B roll in it. Just, talk to the camera talking about something maybe I'm excited about or passionate about. And that video will be ranked number one or two or three. And the one that I spent three days filming, <laughs> editing and doing all this cool B roll and animation is like, that one's eight out of 10 or nine out of 10. Yeah. What the heck, man. So, and so for those of you that don't know what we're talking about, when YouTube shows you your analytics, they, they, so one out of 10 means, the video is doing really well. So it compares mm -hmm. each video that you post, it compares it to the last 10 videos. Yeah. So if your video is 10 out of 10, that means it's doing bad. Mm -hmm. So you want to be like four, three, two, you know, one out of 10 those. So uh, we had a comment here. Evangelist says, <clears throat> I was ready to go to M wave last year, but my mom died in Africa three weeks before and I had to travel, but I'm definitely coming this year. Hopefully the wife will join me. Well, sorry to hear about that, man. Yeah. We know that that's the family is the most important over anything. So you don't have to, to apologize about anything. Uh, we, my condolences to you and your family Absolutely. and, you know, look forward to, to seeing you this year, giving you some encouragement and, and meeting you in person. Um, he says she was always saying she hates my theater, but she's the one always dragging visitors upstairs to give them a tour. Go figure. Huh? That's pretty now nice. That his, yeah. I don't care. Is that his wife? I guess he was saying that yeah, he was because he's yeah. trying to bring in his wife. Oh yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, so Rusty, I was going to ask you too, uh, real quick. So, your title says, "Oh, let me let me hide this." Your title says M Wave Event Coordinator. So, why don't you give us a little bit of uh, explanation of what that actually means for the those people that are watching? Because that's you weren't doing that last year. No, I wasn't. Um, I've, I've Doing come all the garbage a, a... that Michael doesn't want to do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What kind of in his job description, really? I, um, I, I do. Uh, I'm the vice president of miscellaneous. So, <laughs> what? Whatever needs to get done. No, I. You know, I. I had a lot of fun uh, being. You know, the first year going for the tech. The second year was more about the community and this third year for me is about giving back to the community and i'm just wanted to be able to contribute in a meaningful way um, to make the experience as good as possible for uh, the attendees the exhibitors uh, the host michael and ryan and and also for the volunteers because man we we have like 
I think we're up yeah. to like 25 different volunteers that are helping to put on the show. Oh, nice. And I want to put big credit to John Brock, um, our very own, as he's he's really helping me with the hospitality <laughs> side of things. He has a he has a knack for hospitality and a, a heart Definitely. for it too. Um, and so we've had several discussions and and how to make this experience uh, one mm -hmm. that people want to come back to year after year. Um, so my job is a lot of coordinating with, you know, the seminars and the scheduling and the organizing. You know, I, I love my spreadsheets. I like planning. Mm -hmm. I like making sure everything comes together nice and neat. Um, it's been a, a, a steep learning curve, but it's been a fun one because I love the hobby and I like the people mm -hmm. I'm working with. Um, so on that note, I have to plug a couple things. One is the M wave 2024 VIP giveaway contest. Um, Jordan, can I share my screen to show yeah. this? Is it, let me make, is it still, this yep, one? Okay. it's ready to go. So <clears throat> if you go to the MS in Midwest AV slash contest, um, there's a video that Michael describes uh, kind of uh, about the contest, but it's extremely easy. The prize is three VIP tours. Those are $200 a piece. So that's a $600 value and um, a general admission ticket. So that's another $75. So a total prize value of $675. It doesn't cost you anything to win. Um, I, I kind of wish that I was eligible because I already bought mine like, He's like Dang. a long time ago. I don't, I should have come up with this later, uh, a lot later or sooner. I mean, but, uh, this is in thanks to three yeah. attendees that just wanted to give back to the community. That's awesome. And, and that's Drew, Anthony and Brian. We want to honor the, yeah. the source for their generous donations. Cause that's what made it possible. Yeah. Um, but you get to whoever wins and we only got like 10 days left and yeah, there's we not haven't a lot of had that, that many committed. entries. Really? So your chances of winning. Very extremely high. good. Very, <laughs> like you have excellent. Yeah. yeah. And, and all we want you to do is share, make a 90 second video, just sharing your home theater journey. Why you mm -hmm. want to come to M wave, um, yeah. upload it, submit the form so that we can keep track of everyone um, we're going to watch those, maybe have a little fun. Maybe we'll play those live. We haven't figured that out yet, but um, that's it. Submit a 90 yep. second or less video. Easy peasy, man. Just Easy. Use your cell phone. Yeah. That's awesome. you, you don't have not, to be we're not nothing. About lighting. We're not worried. No about editing. <laughs> nope. Doesn't have to be 4K. Doesn't have nope. to be. <laughs> not at all. No. I mean, you do get extra points if it's 8K <laughs> or higher. <laughs> Is that part of the contest HDR rules? If, if it fills up Rusty's 150 inch screen, that's right. Yeah. Scope, then you get extra yeah. points. 12K <laughs> Dolby Vision. <laughs> um, I'm obviously kidding, but seriously, like this is gonna. This is this is awesome. This yeah. is one of the coolest things about M Wave because you can't just go see yeah. these theaters, and these are good theaters that have been handpicked by local enthusiasts. So. Yeah. please go do that yeah and one thing one, to say about that too is um but let me address this question real quick evangelista he says will the 200 hundred dollar vip home theater experience include the 75 dollar general admission great question so we have separated that for two main well technically for two main reasons the biggest thing is the vip home theater experiences are really kind of like a separate event it's not at the show it's not at the convention center. These are in people's homes, and that happens before the show even starts. That's on a Thursday. So those will take place Thursday morning. There's three different time slots during the day. Thursday morning, Thursday kind of in the mid-afternoon, and then Thursday early evening. And so you can choose one, two, or even three. And if you win, you get a chance to pick one from each one of those time slots. Um, and so... And then, but it gives people technically somebody could come to one, two, or three of those and not even come to the show, mm -hmm. or vice versa. They could come to just the show the three days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and not do any of the VIP home theater experiences. So those are just totally separate. 
the other thing that we're doing with that is again, we're trying to give back and be a blessing to those that have graciously opened up their home to you guys to be able to experience their home theater, to spend two and a half hours in their home talking about what we're most passionate about, about movies and music and home theater, asking questions about their journey and um, how they did it or how they calibrated or how they set up their butt kickers or their tactile transducers or their near field subwoofers, things like that. Um, and just picking their brain. Uh, I think there's huge value in that, but we're splitting the revenue with, with the homeowner as well. Um, and so they're literally getting half of that, that revenue, because again, we want to be a blessing to them. Um, so we've got that separated. So great question. Awesome. I had one more request and, um, and then we can, we can move on to, uh, or this may be our last subject. Yeah. I think this may... is the last subject. Cause I also need to go get me something to eat too. <laughs> and y'all been yeah. grinding for a while, man. You're at yes, two hours, two hours and 15 minutes. minutes. Yeah. We Still always, and he watching. always says like, oh, it's going to be a short one. One hour. <laughs> time. Never, it it <laughs> never is, never sure. <laughs> but it's cool though. It's, it's, it's nice to, to, to see everybody. You know? yeah. What you, did you want to share again, Rusty? Um, no, I just, I, I just, I want to request that if you are thinking about attending M Wave, um, I need, as as the organizer, the coordinator, I need to know numbers. The sooner I can know numbers, uh, the better, so we can plan mm -hmm. and put on the best possible event. If you are thinking about attending, please go buy your tickets as soon as possible. Don't wait until the week before. Um, so. If if you're going, you can you can plan your hotel later, but go ahead and get your your tickets now. Uh, you can get it through Jordan's link so that he gets due credit for sending you this way, um, and we would really appreciate it. Awesome, man. Yeah, we'll look forward to seeing everybody there again. M Wave is a really cool event. My first time was last year, and I was like, I'm definitely going again. It's it's definitely more of an a, an intimate event where you. Mm -hmm get opportunities to listen to speakers you get to hear shootouts uh you get to just and i think one of the biggest things that i noticed was the camaraderie and just meeting like-minded people that have the same passion we might all be on different journeys mm -hmm. but we all share that same that's that's one thing that fascinates me about home theater dudes is, is that somebody might have a million dollar theater somebody might have a ten thousand dollar theater somebody might have a sound bar right. but even though all experiences are different, we all share the exact same passion. And that's what brings everybody together in this community. And, you know, Michael and Ryan and, and Rusty are doing a, a fabulous job, something that's never been done before. So appreciate, appreciate, you know, all you guys effort. And cause I know it's a lot of work. It's, <laughs> I know it's, it's a, a year lot. long. Yeah. It, it's wild because as soon as M wave finishes, we're planning for the next year. The first year we did it in six months. We, mm -hmm. wow. Ryan and I had a conversation in January and we hosted our first M wave uh, at the lead center in Kansas city six months later in July. And then the next year, uh, which was 2023, we had probably like eight months that we planned. And then literally as soon as M wave finished in 2023, we're already making plans for 2024 because we want it to be the best that it possibly can be. Um, Oh, this is what I was going to say earlier about that, uh, about the contest. Even if you've already bought your ticket, even if you've already, maybe even like Rusty said, he you know, already um, bought his home theater experiences. Maybe you got a buddy that you'd love to invite. Maybe the submission would be, maybe not even for you, but maybe you submit a video saying, man, my buddy, you know, john i want to nominate him man and here's why you know and maybe you're sharing his story we're we're leaving that completely up to you um we just want to be able to to get like like rusty said we just want to give back and we thought this would be a fun way uh mm -hmm. to get the community involved in that and and just to hear your stories because i you know when i do a home theater tour that's one of my passions it's more than just the gear i love the gear i love the hobby but I also love the story. I love the people that are involved. I love the lessons learned from it. Um, so that's part of why we wanted you to share your story, your home theater mm -hmm. journey. 
And if it wasn't for M Wave, I would have never met yeah. Jordan last yeah. year and John the prior year. And I never would have met Vern because we never <laughs> would have had our local theater group. And yeah. um and what's crazy is me and Vern live literally about a, a third yeah, of a wow. mile away from each other. <laughs> wow. and we would have never even known it. That's awesome. Well, yep. That's true. Yeah, and I never even and, and I remember I think it was I think it was Saturday, Rusty. Like I didn't even really know Rusty, but Rusty and and his his buddies were going on lunch, and he stopped by and he was like, "Hey, Jordan, we're gonna go to lunch down just down the street. You want to go?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure." And so we went down there, we ate, and we started talking, and and then before you know it, you know, we I think after after we got back from M Wave, you know, I reached out to him and was like, you know. I'm going to be doing a home theater tour with Doyle the first time, depending on how that goes. You know, I might want to drive down to Dallas because he was telling me that, you know, they had some really cool stuff. So I never would have had the opportunity to go, you know, start doing home theater tours and check out the, those awesome home theaters. And so, yeah, man, I mean, M Wave has brought a lot of a lot of people together, met, met some really cool people there last year. I mean, like I met a guy, I don't remember his name, but I met a guy that works on like video games, like popular video games that everybody yeah. plays. So, yeah. I mean, it's just just people from all over and just a really cool experience so if you can make it do it because it's you, you won't regret it and, and then you'll be like all right i want to go again next year <laughs> well guys oh, michael sorry. i'm sorry i'm sorry i put you on the spot but <laughs> no, thank you I, thank you so much for... like, you were like hey you want to jump in and talk about m i'm like eh. i know but like i i, I put I mean, him on the spot on the agenda, fine, but i, I didn't want to just yeah no you're, you're yeah. never crashing man you're I'm always welcome and peace out you know that, that seems kind of i, I asked him to serving. crash the party so uh thank more you than welcome man. i appreciate the invite yeah man. you know i i support jordan i love what he's doing i love his positivity i love just his passion for the hobby and um and it, it's great Vern. i haven't had a chance to meet you personally yet no nope. Um, but these other guys, man, we've developed relationships over the past three years because of him wave. And I love, um, I think to me, that's been the most rewarding <clears throat> aspect of my six year journey on YouTube is all the people, the friendships, the relationships that, that I've established and, and developed over the past six years. And that's really, you know, I made a video not too long ago talking about how home theater this can be lonely at times because a lot of us don't know too many people that are into this space. It is pretty niche. And so that's really just one of the, that's like the heartbeat of M wave. We want to connect you with other people. I love the fact that rusty from year one, he's like, man, there's a couple other dudes that are from the Dallas Fort Worth, Texas. Let's, let's hang out. Let's figure out how can we get together. And since year one, they've been continually meeting and, and now, how many people have y'all had the most in one get together? I know we've had at least twenty. I know at John least. did a. You Yours did an bigger. event with um, some two channel people that was even bigger, right? That's yeah, I had a two channel meetup because of the the home theater group. But mm -hmm. I would say yours is the yours was the biggest, mm -hmm. Rusty. Yeah. I mean, I'm yeah. not bragging or anything. Was that was that in <laughs> December or was that a different time? I think it was December, yeah. When I, when I came down, December okay. one, yeah, yeah. yeah. When we you were, were down, there. that was. We and what what was would, was a total of like twenty? It, it was. I think we were right about twenty, and that's not yeah. counting my family. So yeah. if we count, throw them in, you know, <laughs> pump up yeah, the numbers. I, I think I've had a couple, <laughs> eight or nine, up to twelve here. But see, even that's phenomenal. If if you had five guys over, that's incredible. Just to be able to share with five other people in your area that are passionate about the same thing you are. And, you know, that's really what it's about. And so we're just being really intentional every year. We, we kind of focus even more on that. And this year we're going to do some things that are really, really intentional to help you and really just give you freedom. How about that? We're creating a space to give you freedom that makes it super easy to meet new people, to hang out, to talk on theater. Even if you're an introvert, like I am, at times um and i know y'all don't believe that but at <laughs> times i'm an introvert and but it makes it really easy to talk to anybody at the show because you already know they're there for one reason they love mm -hmm. home theater so you've got an immediate connection and that's all that matters so i started that 
the AVS thread back <clears throat> after the first mm -hmm. M wave, right. and Rusty and I got together and with Michael. Uh, well, okay, not, not Michael Stevens, but the mm -hmm. other M wave attendant, yeah. um, who kind of the, the charter members. And now we're at 43 pages. Worth. That's wow. crazy. That's phenomenal. That's crazy. Yeah, so, awesome. So, I love it. And there was nothing at that. Well, yeah. we know that there's home theater people in the area. We just don't know where they are. So yeah. just the just the group has created 43 pages of just you know just talking and Come being crazy. And yeah, yep. yeah. It. So that's awesome. Good stuff. So the last comment of the night, Rob. Rob's been a very uh, comments a lot on my channel. So I appreciate you, Rob. Appreciate you all all the uh, you know support that you give. He says this was fantastic, guys. Thank you. Time to watch a movie barbie tonight so i can test out those coaxial tweeters nice well thank you everybody for tuning in we're at two hours almost two hours and 30 minutes and there's still 20 people watching so we appreciate everybody that's watching this live and for those that are watching this after the fact we greatly appreciate you everybody Vern, rusty rusty john and i know doyle left already and michael we appreciate everybody that appreciate everybody in this community man everybody has a lot of knowledge and is always contributing so we thank you guys for for tuning in and everybody enjoy their friday evening and we'll see you on somebody's channel next <laughs> all right guys thanks jordan